Wow. So I just remember, I can still remember till this day, crying and the rain mixing it with the tears. Because <laughs> that's why I didn't know This what rain is salty. Yeah. I was like, I don't know if I'm crying or if it's just the rain. <laughs> and so I just... But I learned how to ride the bike you after that day. I learned after that day, I could ride the bike. Wow. But he would not let me go inside the house until I could ride the bike. So parents at home, if you're listening, another advice <laughs> here. If you're teaching your kid how to ride a bike and they can't, wait for a giant rainstorm. Yeah. And that's how. In five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Tittles. Welcome Hello. to another corona-free episode. Corona-free? We the, don't know that, though. Of the genius. I mean, bra- yeah, I we hope, don't. Uh, I'll find out in two weeks from now. Nick's dead. I got it. Every <laughs> time I, I think somebody has corona, I always think it's you first. Thanks, man. So does everyone in my family and <laughs> Tiff. Tiff hates you, dude. You know why? It's because you do not stay safe at home. Is that the phrase? Yeah, dude, I stay, I stay at home all the time. I'm yeah. probably, when I'm not training, I'm the most safe person around, bro. I get tested at least once a week. Minimum. Mm. Minimum. Yeah. You know how much that fucking test cost? It was like 125 bucks, 150 bucks. You got a bunch of rapid tests, huh? I got so much. I wasted so much money. I'm immune. I actually can't get it. It's yeah. impossible. That's what you found out. I do the free fr- the frag. I do the, the free frag. ones. You the, the free frag. ones? The free ones. <laughs> how long does it take uh, for you to get it? Uh, usually right around a 24-hour mark. Oh, really? That's actually pretty fast. It's pretty yeah. good. They say 48, but it's usually 24. But right like, now, they're crazy. The lines and shit are nuts. Because like, the holidays, huh? Because when I... Yeah, yeah, and I think just because it's cracking off right now, too. Because mm. uh, when I went to Dodger Stadium, it took me 30 minutes. And then Sarah went to get went to go get tested. And it took her like three hours. She had a breakdown and shit called me crying. Was like, I'm going to run out of gas. My battery's going to die. I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> She's this crazy girl in line crying. Dude. I but started it, laughing so much. But it, but it, but <laughs> the it worst is. boyfriend ever, dude. <laughs> we, like, went, we went one time and we were in line for about like an hour maybe an hour and a half not three hours though. that's a fucking long time and i would be scared too loki because like my car obviously is in perfect condition it's made out of chopsticks but continue um <laughs> but well, what i was saying was like tin tiff, can. tiff had to go use the restroom flintstones she, car <laughs> god damn it that was foot like pedal, one time foot powered i'm just like Hell no yeah. so tiff had to use a restroom and they and she got out and they have porta potties there but it's like for staff only and but it's like these lines are gonna be around an hour usually right i can't do that that's why i just rapid test that bitch yeah but the times we like we only had to wait an hour once most of the time it's not when we go but she had to go pee and they got so mad at her they for were peeing like, yeah for peeing in the porta potty they had, like they were making such a fuss about it they had to clean everything out they had to like spray it down which i get you know but at the same time it's like have some people trip a little bodies. too hard though you know what i mean yeah it's like some people were like oh yeah some guy yelled at me i was at phil's oh, yeah what happened to phil's so i was at phil's and i was doing work and i was eating and it's, it, they have outdoor dining or whatever right i'm sitting down i'm on my computer eating this sandwich and i'm having a coffee this guy walks in this big tall lanky white boy he was probably like 25 maybe he was a real curly headed fuck i'll say that he walks in and he fuck like those curly he fuck. he like glances at me from outside and I just like I just like kind of made eye contact with him I didn't think anything of it and I'm on my computer he's walking by and he goes you should put on a fucking mask oh is he trying to get his ass beat bro and I'm on my computer and it took me a second to be like oh he's talking to me I'm like I turn around and I say something very generic but like real tough guy yeah what'd you right? say because it I, I didn't realize and I was like oh shit I was what like what kind of mask I was like what you <laughs> I got 95. There's a Cloth? lot of different ones. You fucking Carbon shirt. filter? No one cared who I was till I put and on I the said, mask. Don't- <laughs> <laughs> a Batman mask? That was everything but your mouth? <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome, dude. But yeah. So he walks. He's walking away as he says that. And I go, uh. why don't you come over here and say it in my fucking face? And I say that. You said that. Yeah, that's nice. what I said. Hey, that was good. That's fucking a classic good, response, right? that is I was classic. like, say it in my fucking face, dude. It's like yeah. a cough in your mouth. Yeah, and yeah. he's already da- like he's already like he already ran. He was already like down the hallway. And he walked pretty fast, and I also didn't realize it quick enough. And then he goes, "I already did," and then he left. I already did, dude. And I was like, "This." F-. And at first, I was like, "I was like, re- I was fantasizing about beating this kid's ass yeah, all day, right?" Absolutely. But at the same time, it's like I really did want to be like, "Hey, man." What's going through your fucking head, bro? Yeah, right. Did you have someone that just recently got coronavirus, or did you just think that like, oh, or or if I was a big two hundred pound white dude that's buff as shit, would you have said the same thing to me? Of course. You not. know what it is too. Like, <laughs> dude, oh, well, that's why he did a drive by fucking chastising. 
I've never seen somebody right. do that. I literally just was also, like. Also, I've never heard somebody to the response to say it in my face was already did. As he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. As he's like in his car. Why would I do it again? So you in know, like car already did. It. So you know where the back door of Phil's is, right? Yeah. I was standing like I was sitting right next to that door. Okay. Uh, that back entrance, and he was already by like Sun Life, like wrapped around, kind of like by Lemonade. Mm -hmm. And yeah, by the time the he responded, he was saying that. So he he echoed the message. Too. Yeah. Because you got to echo it because it's that little hallway. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. why you couldn't tell who said it to you. You're like, are you talking to me? He, he walked right by me. He's like, put your you. fucking mask. And I was like, what the hell? I was like, oh shit. And I was like, well, fuck you, man. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think, hey, I, don't think I would have even registered it was to me. I would have just been coughing and just writing away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was coughing a bunch though. No, yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't. But I was literally just sitting there. Loser. But he's losing his humanity too. It's like, what does that do? It's what, outdoor right. dining. Some people. Though, that's bro. what I'm saying. And also, I'm allowed to do this. Some people are too, trip too. There's the anti-maskers where like everything's a hoax and whatever. Mm -hmm. That's this extreme. But there's also the super paranoid fucking assholes that are like, dude, mind your fucking. Just stay, stay away. Stay your ass at home, bro. Do you got to get Phil's coffee? Make coffee at your own fucking right. house if, if you're, you're that, that scared. If dude, you're that fuck paranoid off. to begin with, or also just hey, stay six feet away from this dude and you're fine. Yeah, yeah, and also just what? walk fast, walk around me, bro. Like yeah. fuck, dude. I don't know there's just there's just certain people that are like that. When I was in uh, yeah. LA years ago, this is when I my temper was really short. So this guy when <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when this guy referred to the last oh, one. This, this will witness you. He's witnessed Wait, me what? be angry once in three years. Hey, and that, hey, that, hey, that number one bullshit, bro. Oh, what? I've, I've never seen him. I've never seen podcast? him have a meltdown. But I feel like we're close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> someone is gonna bro someone's gonna say something to david where he just like sees red and then i'm gonna have to like pull this guy off like david off yeah. of some guy no i believe it i'm too old for that now i don't know man. last podcast all about you beating the shit out of somebody <laughs> <laughs> actually this, this is not true this is and not we're probably true. gonna have more stories like that for as sure, we continue. 100%. hey I, let me tell you something i i still feel bad about that yeah no and you should because you fucking almost I murdered a guy but continue your story about the time <laughs> <laughs> you don't feel, you don't hey, come on, man. You know you like that shit. <laughs> Your dick was hard the whole time. You like it, it. Felt, it felt right. Yeah. <laughs> it felt, so what do you call it when you get angry and you have an erection after you hurt somebody? Mr. Tyson, that's called a murder boner. <laughs> What's it? No theory. And fucking Joe laughs. <laughs> no theory, Joe. Well, what do you call it? Like, I'm asking you. I'm, the I'm not joking. Well, I don't know. <laughs> like, Joe, Joe got real serious. Joe's like, I, I have no <laughs> No, what do you call it when you hit? He has that raspy voice now, which I really enjoy. It's dope. Dude, you know what's funny is I heard him on a podcast recently talking about the length of his table now. He was, I, I think he was talking to Willie D or something from mm -hmm. the Ghetto Boys, but he was like, I made the table longer because of that Mike Tyson podcast. <laughs> he was like, because he was so intense. He was like, I was fucking nervous. Dude, like I was nervous, and then he looks over at the Jamie or whatever, and Jamie was like, "I was nervous too." <laughs> he was like, "They're all scared with Tyson in the room because nobody That's could so catch funny. when he was making a joke or not." Yeah that, yeah, that was the hard part. So when Joe would laugh, Tyson would be like, "What's so funny?" Yeah, right. I don't get what. Why are you laughing? But and I also feel the way he was breathing was just like he would like there would just this he sound like a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like, holy, this fucking polar he, bear right here, dude. I feel like the last time he was on that before the fight was scheduled, he wasn't like that. No, no he, he was, was a he? lot more chill. He's a lot more, like, relaxed, right? Yeah. So you could tell he's definitely in a warrior mindset, mm -hmm. you know? His favorite whatever. phrase now is, you know what? <clears throat> you know what? That's what he always says now. <laughs> you know what? Mm -hmm. I just, I want to kill somebody, <laughs> but I can't. <laughs> yeah. And it kills me on the inside because I feel like a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's good. But seriously, I, I listen to a lot of Tyson. That's good. Yeah. That's actually really good. Thank you, man. I that's thought fun. Bart's was good. And yours is better. Well, I think that when everybody good. imitates Tyson, they go too ham on it. They go high. Too much yeah. Hey, guys, I'm Mike Tyson. He doesn't, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, sound, yeah, yeah, he doesn't yeah. actually sound like that. They, they go yeah. that way. He, his voice is in a lower register, and he's a lot more common zen than you think that he is. What other mm -hmm. accents can you do? Huh? I don't know. The typical racist Asian accent. Oh, that was good. That was good, too. <laughs> yeah, but uh, what the fuck? Were you were we talking about a story about how you got really mad at somebody. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah, long story short with this one, and I think I told on the podcast, but I, I know exactly what that situation is because I was outside of a Chipotle in Larchmont and I was having a meeting on the phone. It was actually a radio interview. And I'm like a good distance away from everybody else who's eating their Chipotle. And I'm there with my buddy, Paul Kim. And so I'm sitting there and we're laughing, joking around on the radio interview. And I come and sit down and this guy walks over to me as I'm still on the on, having the radio interview, he goes, hey, you're being really fucking annoying, by the way. Oh. And I'm sitting there and I felt, 
you know what? Just like oh, you. <laughs> how like, long ago was this? This Whoa. was like six, seven years ago. So I. Wow. I, it's like people you can't, are crazy. You can't yeah. process what's was going he, on. Was he white? He was a widow, and so yeah. he, <laughs> you can't process what's going on because it's like normalcy bias. You would never think somebody would do that to you. Yeah. So I'm just right. saying. I'm like, oh, and I remember just saying to myself in my head, I go, by the time this interview is done, you're not going to be angry anymore because time will pass. And because yeah. the interview was like 15 minutes, and you have to be, you know, in a persona, not a, necessarily a persona, but you have to like be entertaining on the interview. interview. Yeah. And so when he, so Paul was inside and he was ordering, and after it was done, I just started. I stood there at the corner. This is the corner of the street. And by the way, Larchmont in that area is loud as fuck. Was he an older car. guy? No, he was a younger dude. And it was he was with his girlfriend. Oh. And so I'm sitting there. What and a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can remember processing all these thoughts. I'm like, why would he think I'm being loud? I'm really far away. And on top of that, Larchmont is a busy street. There's cars honking. It's already loud as fuck. So I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> Who the fuck does this guy think That's he so is? Crazy. And I'm sitting there just. Who goes to a public place and tells somebody, "Hey, you're being annoying. Get the fuck out of here." Exactly. Bro. And I'm Go like, in your car, you fucking idiot." Oh yeah, you bro, know what? What he, the fuck? It, the way he could have approached it too was simply, "Hey man, like I'm trying to have my meal. You're kind of being loud." And I would have been a little irritated, but I wouldn't have been mad. But he said, "You're being fucking annoying." So it's like, oh, how many times has he said this to somebody? He got away with it, and I just kept building this narrative. But also, yeah, right, go right, right. somewhere else, dude. Yeah, you don't have to sit there, you fucking and jack off. I, I'm yeah. outside. It's outdoor dining yeah, on a busy street. You're yeah, mad because right. someone's being loud at a public eatery. Fuck yeah, right. Here, and so. I'm not even in the eating area. I'm literally at the corner near the stoplight, so I'm pretty fucking far away. You know, he he obviously can hear me speak, but I wasn't even anywhere near where, he, like, even further than this, the the length of this room, like okay, really yeah. far. That guy probably doesn't like black distance, people yeah. either. Yeah, <laughs> and he was. Like, you're racist. black enough. He's probably yeah. racist. Yeah, with, you're your, black with your saggy pants. Yeah, yeah. And um, I just remember I walked over, and it's so funny because when you guys mentioned that smile, I did the same smile because I walked over and I shit you fucking not, my butt. <laughs> I walked over to this dude, and he's mid bite, about to bite his chipotle, and I slapped him upside his head full fucking force. Blow burrito came out his mouth That's and he just hilarious. stood up he goes what the fuck and i just looked at him and i put my hand on his shoulder and i was smiling and my buddy paul remembers it because he thought he and i were friends because i had my hand on his shoulder <laughs> you have a real relationship <laughs> with your friends because he, he's, he's sitting outside and he could just see it but he can't hear anything so i just had my he said he's like dude i thought you guys were friends because you were smiling and you had your hand on his shoulder but it was see, context <laughs> always is important i was literally telling him i was like either you sit the fuck down or i'm gonna beat the shit out of you right in front of your fucking girl yeah and that's all I said. And I just kept smiling at him because I was so infuriated. I, right. I couldn't process how angry I was. And I never had that happen to me before. And I was just like, sit down or I'm going to fucking murder you. That's all I just kept on saying. Yeah. And then his girl was like, what's your problem? He was just telling you to be quiet. And then I remember this is when you knew I was a crazy person. Bro, people are like, fucking nuts. Are yeah, crazy. The amount of like, yeah. who are these people, <laughs> yeah, man? Right. And her, who the fuck <laughs> goes to, oh my God. And you, her saying oh that made God. me even more angry. My friends, have you ever tried kickboxing or boxing before? Better yet, have you heard of Fight Camp, my friends? Because if you haven't, you are missing out. You guys know by now I love boxing and kickboxing, and I actually lost a majority of my weight because of it. And Fight Camp can bring you all of this to your home, baby. Now, don't get it twisted. Fight Camp can be for absolute beginners or experienced boxers who want a great workout from home or just want to level up those boxing or kickboxing skills. It comes with the gear you need and not crappy gear either. They have one of the best freestanding punching bags available quality gloves, wraps, and even a punch tracking sensor so you can see that speed, baby. If you're looking to get off that ass and find a dope way to gain a new skill while getting a workout, it's going to be Fight Camp. This could even be an amazing holiday gift. I would have flipped my shit if I received this as a gift, no joke. So Fight Camp is offering flexible financing for as low as 0% APR and $0 down. And right now, as a limited time holiday offer, get free shipping and a gift valued up to $109 with every Fight Camp package. Just go to joinfightcamp.com slash genius. That's right. Get free shipping and a gift valued up to $109 with your purchase. Bring an authentic boxing and kickboxing gym into your home with Fight Camp. To get your free gift, just go to joinfightcamp.com slash genius. That's joinfightcamp.com slash genius. And so the dude <laughs> uh, literally sits down and I grab a chair and I sit next to him. I was like, good. Now get the fuck out of here. And so... <laughs> I told him to sit down. I told him to get the fuck out. Bro, you're the Golden State Killer. 
<laughs> you did the most but a mild version <laughs> of the Golden State Killer. And yeah. I literally told this fool, yeah, I, like, I just remember just going off. I was like, you and I are not born in the same place. I was like, you're lucky I'm in a better place right now because I would literally fucking murder you. But I was like, we are not cut of the same cloth. You need to fucking leave see, or I'll fucking kill you. Because I just never in my life thought somebody could just <laughs> talk down to me like that. See, you know what I had a battle with? I was talking to my buddy Kenny about this. And when I told him the story, he goes, you should have chased that motherfucker down and beat his fucking ass. And I was well, like, Well, let's All right, not Kenny. do that, Kenny. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny. I know, Kenny. Kenny, Kenny. He was like, no, no, no. He goes, but people have to understand that they can't be doing this type of shit to people like without, <clears throat> without repercussions. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, you know what? You're absolutely right. That is kind of true, but also there's a middle ground. Yeah. There's a middle ground. Yeah, I, I was. You can't like, beat nobody's I, ass. I, right? I love that story, and I was like, everything was like, I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm glad you slapped him, glad you the hand, you told him crazy cold shit. But then when you sat down and literally punked him out of the chair, I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. that was like when he got maniac level. But also, <laughs> I feel like that's very deserved no, because it is, some it people is, it is. don't think that like they could do things like that. Obviously, you could probably say David went overboard. Yeah, probably. Whatever. I don't. I don't think so. Actually, so, somebody will say that. But the only reason my, will my, say that, but I don't think so. My whole thing is, is like when you put that that type of energy out there. When you go to someone and you're that disrespectful to someone you don't know at a public restaurant, you here's, deserve to get hit by a car a little. Here's bit. why Not I don't hard, think you went bit. overboard is because that guy's actually lucky that you weren't a real psycho yeah. that's yeah. how i always look at it because i'm like that's when true. people yeah. say or do weird shit like that i'm always like dude literally i could be a crazy person who just likes killing people yeah. and yeah. i could just kill you yeah and you're literally you're t taking that chance with me like i'm not like think like i i think about it like in a funny <laughs> yeah. way we talked about like, this before yeah, we I just shot this dude but i wouldn't actually do it but yeah. there's guys out there that were like i just feel like shooting somebody today yeah. this guy i think he asshole. chose to pick on me because i'm a fat asian dude goofy looking guy that's very once nice. again yeah, that's, that's a too. very common theme that happens to david right yeah. and it's like as an asian dude you see this shit happen like All I'm, the not, time. I'm not gonna i'm not gonna sit here and be like you know like when i was looking at my i was looking at like old pictures of myself and i was like oh i don't know why people picked on me like because i look like the yeah. easiest person to pick and i know on. why yeah, he right. picked on me too because he thought he could i still say look that like i wasn't gonna do on. something you know For but sure. then it's like sure. the moment you hear somebody speak with conviction that they're gonna murder you it's like oh he's He's uh, yeah. not the typical Asian that it's I was expecting. It's a different story, yeah. And the reason why I told him after I told him to sit down was Did because he, leave? he left. Because and That's the reason so why I told him because <laughs> I, I was getting so angry. So he sick. had because well I deserved. Love that story. Yeah, well deserved. You know, and he had to leave because if he, I couldn't sit there and just watch him because like I was getting just fucking getting angry. It's, it's yeah. also like you have to make a decision. Like when, once again. If you bring that type of energy out in somebody, you better be ready for what's gonna come. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it would have been can't. a bad look because my buddy Paul was coming out too. So it was like two, you know, six foot one Asian dudes. It's like, oh, this these, these guys are gonna beat my ass. And yeah. this, I just, I could, to be honest with you, that I got so mad, and I had a, I remember at that moment, I just moved to LA. This was like, may actually, it was more than seven years ago, probably like eight or eight years ago. So. I just moved to LA. You assaulted a man eight years ago. <laughs> I, I just moved to LA. <laughs> I wasn't really comfortable in this space. And I just, I had like this very weird moment where I didn't like a lot of people that I was meeting in this city. Yeah. And so I remember I left to Sacramento for three weeks. So after you're, that. you're fresh out the hood though. I left I left to Sacramento for three weeks because uh, I was so pissed. Like yeah. I just wanted to get the fuck out. So he was like the, the straw that broke the camel's hump. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I actually need to leave from this area because a week before that I almost beat up somebody in my apartment oh really you so, have so <laughs> many stories of you almost beating somebody my, my buddy Ed Park he was there because he, we lived in the same apartment Ed Park DP no different Ed Park oh, so, oh shit yeah <laughs> you know a lot of you know as Koreans we all got the same <laughs> I was like, oh, I thought I wasn't expecting that <laughs> yeah so that was the, the last so there was three things that happened I don't want to go through all the stories but there was three things that happened and that was the third thing that happened within a so month stories. <laughs> where I'm like you know what I'm just fucking done with the city I can't deal with people here people feel because where I grew up too like you you couldn't just say stuff like nah, that. Nah, you can't. There bro. was real consequences. So, like, in my mind, I just kept telling myself, and this is a really bad thought to have, but it's like, how can you go around say that stuff without having anything happen to you? Yeah, because it just doesn't happen. Like where I grew up, anyways. Yeah. Like if you said something to somebody, but that's or, how it should be, though. Yeah, that is kind of how it should. That's be. That's exactly how it should be. Yeah, like you, you shouldn't have, like, for instance, the guy with the, the the shit about the guy with the mask, right? If he really had beef with me. Sit down and talk to me, bro. Like you, you have beef with me not wearing a mask. Let's sit down and talk about it. Why? Yeah. Why you think? Why you think I should be wearing a mask right now? Yeah, I'm very right. curious. Yeah, and that was my whole thing too. I was like, I'm very curious to see what's going through this fucking kid's head because I'm sure it was a very sensitive topic. Right. But at the same time, you can't talk to people like that 
and walk away and think everything's all good. Well, and also like, what was he getting out of eggs? Like, like he was, you. because you, yeah. he, could, he was already gone. Exactly. Like, it's just like, fuck it. Like in his head, he could be like, this guy's an asshole for not wearing a mask. But like, am I really going to try to start a fight right now over it? Like, exactly. hey, I'm already almost in my car. But like, he had to go out of his way to be like, hey, like I got to say something or and, whatever. And usually when that happens in my head, I'm like, oh, that's a power trip. Like the guy that went up to David and was like, you're fucking annoying. That's a power trip. And the, that's something. I, it was so that's weird because <laughs> that's annoying. He as literally that got annoying out of his fuck. fucking seat while he's eating to come over and say that to me. Why? Crazy. What are you out of your fucking mind? Like, yeah, right. Who are you? What did I do to you? You know how many people live in LA, dog? You, yeah. think, you think all these people are fucking all just normal, cool people? I'm like, nah, man. You're gonna get a fucking psychopath every now and then. Well, well, just, you keep you keep I'm, running you keep walking around like that talking but, this shit right you better be ready to but you're it. right like how i can't even imagine like unless uh, somebody's being like a, like you're at a restaurant some guy's pulling his dick out like ah, yeah I'm like yo bro what but the then fuck there's are you doing? All, there's not gonna be just one person that's like i right. have a real problem with that right like everyone's gonna be like yo what the fuck but even <laughs> even if i was in that situation and i started talking to said guy with his dick out at the restaurant i would still be like okay i'm engaging so i might have to fight this dude yeah i'm, I'm aware that the, the, the this could happen yeah. even though i'm in the right completely for being like yo, exactly bro, put your fucking exactly cock away. exactly but we could still get in a knife fight because this guy's crazy yeah <laughs> But, who but, knows what's going on but like to just get up and and like act and then be surprised that's what i'm that's what i don't get that's what bothers like, me how, yeah. how are you like okay he felt say he felt really annoyed and he went up to you and said that and then sat back down but the beast be like what's your problem yeah once at like what do, what you started some shit yeah it's what, your what fault. What the fuck do you think is yeah. that this could this is all in the realm of you've opened the door to the shit that could definitely happen now. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you opened the door to these possibilities. And, just, <laughs> and yeah. this fucking girlfriend saying like he just asked you to be quiet. It's, it's like, like no bitch, no, that's not what he said. He did not. Even I'm, when I think about it, I get mad because I just I That just, makes me mad. I'm it's getting just, red hot right now. Just <laughs> red hot. Or hot. Just fucking red hot. But <laughs> <laughs> I think that was also too, if I look back at it, that was probably mm -hmm. the 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 beginning moment where I just started not going out as much because of how irritated I would yeah. get and how people would would talk to other people you know because I'm so yeah. used to everybody just minding their own business and if you and that's how it should yeah because if you mind your own business right. nothing really happens I say a majority of the time no right? you it really doesn't yeah no yeah it really everything goes pretty smoothly I still remember the <clears throat> he had like that that OG BMW 3 series it was bright blue I still remember what if I saw him on the street today I would still know what he looks like that's how I much his you. face is imprinted. He had these, he had those fucking the the brown and black Ray Bans, the the Wayfarers, you know the yeah. the, the the spotted one. He had was he wearing glasses? Uh, sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blonde In, hair, uh, of course. He blue was. and white <laughs> pinstripe dress shirt, uh, fucking uh, chambray shorts, boat shoes, and a sweater over his shoulder. I still oh, remember he was one of those guys. Yes. Over like his with, the, with the cross, the cross, yep, and the, and the bow oh, shoes. I still man. remember exactly what That's he wore. Really if bad. I saw him in the middle of the street, I would know exactly what he looks I like. I bet he's not with his girl anymore because she dumped his ass. Probably, <laughs> you're gonna let him talk to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was Bro. so fucking mad. And I'm the like sweater over the. That's that's crazy too. Yeah, that's sweater a, that's over like, your shoulder. That's a good. That's fucking rap. That's like some terrorist shit, brother. Yeah. <laughs> how do you, yeah. how do you, like, when you see a guy like that, you're like, that guy's probably raped like a, in somebody in college. Probably that's what you think. That how guy's do you probably do date that? Raped. I honestly want to know how like that's such an asshole thing to do. Like, how do you actually go? Like it's it's there's there's a lineage of assholeness yeah. associated with yeah. this clothing. Decision. You better be you better be, be Dan like, Bilzerian or some shit. You better he's be definitely worth roofied it. his sister a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like that fool. He's the guy. He was the he Stanford that, swimmer. How just, like point. I can't even make this shit up. He just had that prototype of that that douchebag white boy. I wish you beat his ass. That'd have been so funny. But you know I mean, what? Though you would have gone to jail perfect. probably. Yeah, you would have. You would have gone to jail because that's the thing. It's like you know what sucks is he could have called the cops and you actually would have gone for sure. And you know what? To be honest with you, bullshit. I think he just didn't call my bluff. He probably could have beat my ass. He was a small dude like he was like a little taller than i was i'm just you know crazy in your eyes it's like you know no, no but that's the thing you. is people aren't really about it a lot most people aren't uh, th that's what he was just a bully he like, didn't want to really find what out it was yeah he folded he was like oh I yeah see. yeah that'd he, be so funny i did all this shit he beats my ass i'm like i'm not exactly who i said i was <laughs> but that's a cool story still though that's a great story, dude. That's yeah, I, I like that. Those are just weird I'm moments. Sure you, cha you changed his life for sure. I, I hope. hope for I the hope better. he doesn't talk to people like that because that's terrible. I'm sure he thinks about it at least. <laughs> I remember that one does. time that fucking fat Asian guy almost beat my ass. It's like, yeah, yeah, you almost did, man. Yeah, some people. That man. just sticks with you.
It, it should, be, unless you're a fucking idiot. Yeah, dude, people are fucking nuts. Yeah, I just don't get angry. The audacity of people, you know? I definitely don't get angry like that anymore because I think now with how I am, if that happened, I wouldn't do that anymore. I would just, I would honestly probably just let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Because I just know the consequences. I have a lot to lose now. Right. If somebody right. just told me like I'm being fucking annoying, I think I just probably just eat a lot of dairy and fart around them. Like, <laughs> I, I do like very petty shit now. Yeah. Like the threatening stuff doesn't matter because also I'm concerned that everybody's an MMA fighter. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I bet you this. What if if he took off his boat shoes and I'm like, oh, this guy does Muay Thai. He's like, yeah. Yeah. I'm he like, plays the Thai music. Hold on, there. Like, <laughs> that'd be so Cobras funny. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he just starts playing the weird, instrument. I'm like, like wicker basket. Where did you get that? Just He's like, wait, you're on Indian? the floor. <laughs> <laughs> And it turns out that guy turned out to be Joe Schilling. Mm -hmm. Oh shit! No, can't stop <laughs> crazy. Wow. And then he beats my fucking ass. Jesus. Well, guys, well, let's get into the genius advice. Yeah. After that story, let's get into some advice for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't be an asshole, guys. Yeah. Just be nice to people, okay? Yeah. Thank God he didn't beat yeah, my ass. Be cool, the cops. He could have called the cops. I would have been in big trouble. Hey, fuck that guy. Yeah. Fuck he that sucks. guy. I'm pretty sure he he just got scared because my buddy Paul walked out too. So he was like, "Oh, there's two guys here." No, it's I think like, it, was, it, it was the fact that he understood that you were like about down. You were <laughs> like, "I'm gonna life. fucking fuck your ass up," and it's serious. Like a lot of people aren't really no, trying no. to get in a fight like that. I don't know. They just want to say shit to you and look cool and get away with it. Yeah. and get away with it that's why the dudes that are really about it don't do that because yeah, they, they don't, don't need to do that yeah. <laughs> I imagine if fucking like francis and ghana went up to somebody and was just right. being a like he, he would never like, do bro, that what a dick no, i remember there was another dude eating a eating his little chipotle little burrito bowl outside it was this really fucking fat old white dude with like a he had a black uh collar shirt short sleeve and like khakis and he just sat there just eating his food just looking over <laughs> like should i say something mm. it's like i just remember i'm thinking like if you say something i'm gonna fuck your ass up too because <laughs> you're probably on his side your ass yeah. <laughs> fuck man yeah mind your business dude mind your, yeah mind exactly. your business mind you don't your know what business, happened man you stay over there this this ain't it guys <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. This ain't, Not, that ain't it that that's, ain't the, that's it. the new david so yeah, yeah, yeah this ain't it guys <laughs> he stole my wallet Carry on. I did. I did. I did. Party. Party. <laughs> so, uh, GB podcast advice. Uh, since we're going to read this out loud and I haven't read it yet, uh, we're going to leave the name out. We're going to call this guy uh, Peter Gonzalez. Peter Gonzalez. Peter Gonzalez. Never met one before, but I'm pretty sure there's one out there. Peter, yeah. Hey, Peter David. Gonzalez. First off, I just want to say thank you for consistently uploading despite all the craziness going on in the world. Awesome. Wow. This cool. podcast has become one of the things I look forward to. Uh, to stop complimenting me. Let's just go straight to the advice because uh, I'm feeling too good right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So I took up hike, hiking a couple of years ago and it's something that I've since come to love. Awesome. Oh, Found this passion and outlet for stress and anxiety has really helped turn my, uh, around my depression. Tight. And with the plans, and with the plans I have for future hikes, I feel like for the first time in a long time, I have something to look forward to. Damn, bro, your life was bleak. Uh, the goal right now cool. is, is to get ready for <laughs> the start. Pacific Crest Trail in 2022. Wow. The trail is 2,650 miles long. Wow. Jesus Christ. Starting at the Mexican border and ending at the Canadian border. God, bro, that's just damn. Not a hike, dude, that's like a, vo a voyage, an odyssey, dude. That's what manifest destiny, that my guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. You got to hire this lady named Sacagawea. Yep. Yeah. That's so DC as shit. Dude, you're about <laughs> That's like you got to find a cyclops or some shit. My man's about to find the meaning of life. Yo, that's bro. wild as fuck, bro. Damn. That's, wow. Peter Gonzalez, you're killing it, my guy. Is so, that even possible? Yeah. The problem is the trail takes four to six months to complete. To complete that's a big problem this would throw a serious wrench in my career plans <laughs> oh yeah uh he just leaves his job yeah, yeah. by the way i'm walking for did six he months. say what he does for a living <laughs> no. uh not yet i'm a semester away from getting my prerequisites completed to be able to apply to, to a nursing program okay if i finish my last semester in may of 2021 that would give me time around until april of 2022 to save money and seriously train for the hike oh, well, first of all i don't know how the fuck you train for something like this I would not be able to apply to any nursing programs. My parents are very much against this since they believe that if I were to take that much time off school, there's a good chance I won't finish what I started. I could possibly lose being on my parents' health insurance if I'm 21 and not a full-time student. I know they're looking out for me and I totally understand their reasoning. Doing the hike would uh, make my future more uncertain. What I do know is that not doing the hike would be something I'll regret for the rest of my life. I'm healthy now and given my family medical history, I don't want to take the chance uh, because I don't know if I'll stay healthy and wait until after nursing school, which will most likely be longer. I guess my questions for you are, is the hike as a bad of an idea as my family has told me? Is doing something I love worth the risk of an uncertain future and not finishing school? Why, why was he saying stuff about 
he won't be healthy enough to do it later in his life. His I don't know. I think right now he, he, I think he's just on a roll. You know, like when you get hyped up and yeah, you, when yeah. you feel like you're you're doing something a hundred percent, it's either strike while the iron's hot or it's never going to happen. Mm-hmm. Well, there's going to be a weird moment for for you where if this is something that you really want to do, a lot of the times, especially because you're a lot younger, you think that your age is a factor for why you can't complete things. Yeah, and that's really not the case. I I mean, when I started kickboxing when I was like what twenty nine, right? 29 now i'm like 32 so yeah 2017 right yeah yeah roughly around there so it's been about like three years and i started really fucking late but you know i i don't have a grandeur of being like an amazing kickboxer but it's something that i do for fun if this is a goal life that you want to set you could do it later on in life after nursing school definitely yeah it's i don't understand why it's really uh pertinent for you to do it now unless you're dying yeah that's the thing too it's like the more time like this is going to take four to six months to complete You probably need like... This podcast is brought to you by Hawthorne. How many of you out there care about your self-care? If you don't, you should because smelling, looking, and feeling your best is where Hawthorne comes in. I know for a lot of us out there, when it comes to lotions and deodorants and face washes, you might not know where to start. Well, screw all of that. Get stuff custom tailored to match you perfectly. All you got to do is take a fun quiz by Hawthorne to get that customized self-care bundle made just for you. It's probably one of the easiest things I've ever done to get the best results. You're going to be surprised how accurate these products are for matching your hair, skin, and body, which normally takes so much trial and error to figure out. You got to buy a bunch of products. You don't know what's going to happen. Well, good skin and hair and smell comes easy with Hawthorne. And if you're lonely, it's probably because your skin is ashy and you stink. So let Hawthorne hook you up, you stinky, smelly face person. Genius Brain listeners, do what I did. Take Hawthorne's quiz today and get started on your personalized self-care routine by going to hawthorne.co and use promo code BRAIN to get 10% off your first purchase. That's H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E dot C-O. Promo code BRAIN. That's Hawthorne dot C-O. Promo code BRAIN. more than a couple years to train for this unless you're david goggins i don't know how like i don't know anything about necessarily like hiking long distance like that but i would imagine it's very physically punishing right because you have to carry all your shit so it's obviously a lot of walking a lot of extra load on your on your body right so i would imagine that you training for something like this is this is not something that you take very lightly this is you you take this very seriously because honestly if i mean he's on his last semester of nursing school bro you're gonna have to train a lot longer yeah so while you're in nursing school finish up train for this for a solid year Mm -hmm. and then you'll be better prepared there's nothing definitely definitely you're in a mind state right now where you think you're on this crazy time crunch and you're not unless you're saying you you didn't tell us about something that you have like a physical ailment Mm -hmm. you know Right. So I don't, it's a, it's a weird concept where everybody feels like time is, like you can't do things when and, you're And older. I feel like that's very strong in someone that's like 20, early yeah. 20s. Because I feel like I have the same thing too. It's like you feel like time is constantly running out. But as you get into your, like your later 20s or whatever like that, that's when you're really starting to feel like that's like the true prime. You know, it's like you're yeah. like 20 is when you kind of make mistakes and you kind of like do whatever the fuck you want to do, whatever. And by the way, later. too, man, you I get you. Have you been listening to a lot of David Goggins? You don't got to be like him. That fool's a fucking maniac. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know what that fool did recently? What? He got hit up on Wednesday before Thanksgiving by a friend that says, hey, let's do a 200 mile fucking uh, race. And he goes, got it. <laughs> no prep. And he does the starts the race on Thursday. Damn. Wednesday, one fucking day, and he completes a two hundred mile fucking race. But to his like to his, his credit though, mind. he's probably been training. He runs like every day. Every like day. 15 yeah. Have you seen a picture of that man's toes? I uh, yeah, destroyed. I disgusting. Seen disgusting. Yeah, I'm look it up. Do you know what Balot looks like? The the <laughs> duck fe- fetus. That's what it looks look like. A, look a picture of fucking Balot and then his fucking uh, toes. Exactly the same. A Bro. duck fetus. Disgusting. Yeah. They're just demolished. Yeah. It's fucking David a Goggins' feet. I'm gonna get some. I'm gonna. I'm gonna jerk off to this later, baby. Come on, now. look at that. Ew, shit. dude. Yeah, disaster. that shit looks disgusting. It does look like balloon. <laughs> it looks like duck fetus. That <laughs> shit's nasty bro, as fuck. Bro, what the, what the hell? fuck? Look at that. This, That's so his nasty. His toenail is completely gone. What the fuck? That's it's a gone. mega bunion, bro. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, you, you ever what? wake up 
and you don't got kneecaps? Well, I say fuck kneecaps. I don't need knee- get hard. I'm like, what are you saying right now, man? Yeah, this makes I no guess, sense, dude. And Even I'm, Navy SEALs are like, yo, this guy's fucking nuts. Yeah, right. I'm pretty sure Navy SEALs are like, he didn't have to finish um, that shit like five times. Yeah. He absolutely didn't have to. They were like, yo, this is full trip. <laughs> That dude's fucking he's, wild. He's, what, he's like in his mid-40s, too. He looks great. Yeah. He does, yeah. He's a beast, dude. He's a fucking He's animal. lean as fuck. He has like 2% body fat. I think uh, either way, you guys are right. Like, it's like there's no rush because it's like he could do this later. He could he could do nursing school, do it afterwards, or however the the, the puzzle pieces fit together best for like the outcome that he needs. Yeah. But even if, um, even if he decided to do it now, I mean, he would get the backlash from his family. And I yeah. don't think it's the hike. I don't think is as bad as his family's making it seem. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's just a fucking hike. And if he's serious about nursing my, school, uh, my best friend, this fool might die on this fucking hike. Yeah. Though. My best friend, he actually uh, I went to, right. so before he, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Before, yeah, yeah. Good point. He, <laughs> fair point fair before point. he applied to med school, he's a doctor now. Mm-hmm. He went to Ecuador for two years uh, and, wow. he, and he uh, applied to the Peace Corps. Nice. So, yeah. you know, I, I could see he's kind of doing that route. And for him, there's no time crunch. Yeah, yeah right. right. Exactly. He was probably one of the older people in his class when he went to med school because he took like two or three years off to do the stuff that he wanted. So I understand his point of view. And that fool went to Ecuador for two years. He came back fluent in Spanish. Did he That's say he, he just yeah, got into hiking experience. right now? I guess he just got into hiking. He just got Recently, into hiking. Yeah, okay, yeah. got it. So if try a thousand mile hike first. Huh? He, exactly. Yeah, like, right. like, like try something that's what, not as treacherous because I feel like once you start this, there's no coming back from this. Yeah. So make sure you're very well prepared for the yeah. hike because this isn't some I just some pictured easy like shit. this crazy progression. Like he starts super happy. Two months later, he runs out of money. Yeah. Three months later, he's sucking dick on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like, ends up in a hotel. It's just terrible. Like yeah. it's, it's one thing if you're you know going abroad or traveling abroad or whatever the fuck, but you're going into the wilderness for. 4,000 plus miles? Right? 2,600 something. Yeah, what's 2000. the longest hike he's done? So it can't be yeah, like a four so hour hike. I was like, yeah, wait, yeah. It's like, what's the longest hike you've done? Six miles. Like, yeah. okay, chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Relax, yeah, yeah. Paul Bunyan. Up. Yeah, 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 work your way up. Start slow yeah, and yeah. kind of work your way up. Right? You know what right. you can do, That's man? True. Because so, it's a zero sum goal, right? It's same, like something that you do for yourself. Same yeah. dude, my best friend, he he likes to take vacations the way nobody likes to take vacations, which is just pain. So he went on, he went on this <laughs> this trail in Spain. I forgot what it's called. It's called Espiro de Death Death Walk. Espiro de Santo Espiro Death Espiro de Walk. San I forgot what it's called, but es, it's... Es muerte. Es la muerte. Yeah, Dia de las <laughs> fucking muertos de caca. Yeah. But he fucking... Oh, it's a good trail. It's a great it's, trail. It's like... It's, nice. I don't know. I mean, people can tell me what this is because I'm pretty sure it's really popular. Popular, but it's like a spiritual walk that you do in Spain. Okay. And I think like the, I forgot how long the full trek is like a hundred and something miles, but then you could choose to do 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 miles of it. Okay. And he could start there. I heard that yeah. shit was, and my, my, my buddy did that shit, dude, his toes were fucked up, dude. Really? He, he did tried the to whole get, thing. Yeah. He tried to get me to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> you got to work your way up to that shit. And it's like, you're in the wild too. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, where is he walking? Where's the where Mexican border? He Canadian just walks border through like cities and shit, or like is he like along the coast? Like, I, I mean, I guess like other people have done it before. Oh, it's like a trail. So there's a trail, or probably and I'm assuming you need money to do this for sure. You or you just gotta suck money. that dick on the road, man. Yeah. Either way, both works. Both works. Sucking dick will get you. Far. But I would say give yourself a little more time to prep because it does seem well, how like do you prep for a fucking three thousand mile walk. Well, you gotta. I feel like you gotta get your body acclimated to that. Like. Not only are you, I'm assuming, well, I don't know. I, sh- I don't know shit about hiking, but like you're also going at different elevations too. Just every day have somebody beat your legs to death with a bat. Yeah. <laughs> That's like your training regimen. Bro. Bow, bow, Break your bow. fucking femur and shit, you know? Because yeah, even a hundred miles is what, like Santa Barbara from here? That wa- Imagine walking yeah. to Santa Barbara. That's like, crazy. Fuck. And you're going to hit different terrain for sure, you know? So it's like, I don't think I've ever trained physically for something that hard in my life. Like, I wouldn't know what that feels like. like yeah, mentally. bro, that's crazy. That's wild as shit. Yeah, maybe don't do it, bro. Just go to nursing school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll say this. I, I say, I, like, for something that big, I feel like you have to work your way. Like, uh, motherfuckers, yeah, yeah, the, the first big trail that they hit isn't, like, if you're a climber, the first one you're not going to do is Mount Everest, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, right. you're going to work your way up to it. Right, you're right, like, right. okay, you know what? Now I'm going to climb that fucking mountain. Hey, I, can't, I, I don't think i ever, ever trained for anything physically in my life. Because mm-hmm. I don't. 
see the point <laughs> you know, I'm like yeah. yeah it has to be enjoy even when i bike it has to be enjoyable like yeah because sometimes too when people like some of my friends they, they they notice that i'm biking they're like hey man we're about to hit this 40 40 mile trek and i'm like hey man go kill yourself i'm not go drive shit. a car like, you, <laughs> are you trying to kill yeah. yourself like literally that's nuts I'm gonna kill yourself. like you, why why yeah. why would i do this so like dude it's like when you go up that fucking 20 miles up it's hard but 20 miles down you feel like you're free and i'm like the dumbest Until salesman I've ever rock. heard in my life. You <laughs> shut the fuck up. Yeah. You tell me I have to go 20 miles uphill? Hell fucking no. Yeah. Because it's not fun for me at that point. 20 feet uphill is pretty rough too. You that know? is pretty rough. I can't do it. I literally yeah. can't. I what I bought today I biked close to 20 miles, and that shit was exhausting as fuck. Your boy's legs are linguini right now. Yeah, that's I a lot. I can't do shit. That's a lot. Yeah. So next like, week we're hitting 25, baby. Come on, dog. <laughs> shit. Let's get a bike. Don't you have a bike made for like a fucking eight foot person? Yeah. Get yeah. a real bike. You do? Well, it's t it was like Tiff's, it was in Tiff's garage, her, her mom's garage. And she was like, hey, I take the bike. And I was like, okay. And then my my buddy Joe, who's an avid bike rider, was like, oh, yeah, this bike is like big for you. He's like, you're going to fall off of it because you suck. And I was like, oh, okay. It's cool. like a, he has like a 57, 58 centimeter frame. And that's on the bigger side for me. Damn. Yeah, so I could probably ride like a 54 centimeter frame. Right. But I choose the 57, the 58 because it's a little more comfortable like in terms of riding position. Yeah, I'm so, more of a 48, 35. So do your feet touch the pedals or? I haven't tried. Wow. Can you ride a bike? Uh, Can you read? Uh, Can you read? <laughs> Define read. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Nick. I didn't learn how to ride a bike until I was 11. Really? What? Yeah. Why? I just, I was just. I'm, I'm a, no I think I'm a late bloomer in everything. Wait, everything were you, I did was were you not curious when your friends were just riding circles around well, you? Well, like I would ride tricycles. <laughs> we'll meet you there, Nick. I would literally, sure. I would literally ride with training wheels all the time. Like that's really? what so I you did. were 11? 11, bro. Like now, now you see you, you deserve to get bullied. At that yeah, point. no, for sure. Totally. <laughs> I would have bullied and, your and ass. I, and I was the one getting bullied. That. I stand behind that. It wasn't until my grandma for my 11. This is the only reason why I remember this. My grandma got me a scooter, a razor, nice for my 11th birthday. And I was like, oh, shit. And I learned how to balance on it. And then I got on the bike the next day. And I was like, oh, shit, I can ride a bike now. So it was, I don't know if that, I don't know if I'm just stupid or if those skills actually translate. But that's how I learned how to ride a bike. Pretty sad, right? You know right? how I learned next how to ride topic. a bike? <laughs> you know how I learned how to ride a bike? Bro, that's the most traumatizing experience of my life. My dad tried doing that to me. And he would realized like, oh, my son's a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish my dad was like that. So there's two ways that I learned how to do things. So I, I first learned how to swim. When I when I was in Sacramento, I used to live in this place called Tem Woods. Uh -huh. And it was a duplex. It was kind of like hood and little ghetto. There's like trap houses every fucking corner. Tight. But there was a community pool that was in the area. And I grew up with a kid who had a lot of anxiety and fear. So I think because my dad had those qualities in himself, he hated seeing that in me. Mm. So he would always try to beat the shit out of me to beat that out of, out of my system. Yeah, right. And it worked, right? Yeah. yeah. Does that work? <laughs> it does not yeah, work. Dude. Full proof. 100%. Yeah. So I would, um, like, so I remember at the community pool that we used to swim at that I actually enjoyed swimming a lot. I actually love swimming now. But this fool taught me by telling me to walk next to the edge of the pool and he literally fucking kicked me in the back <laughs> and I flew in and then I started freaking out. I, was, I remember just screaming help and water was going into my lungs and shit and I just fucking paddle all the way to the edge of the thing crying and he goes see you didn't die <laughs> and that's how he taught me how to swim wow but it worked it worked and it, it worked you know how he taught me how to Sink fucking swim, ride a, right is that what the saying Sink comes from swim. that's literally exactly where it comes from you know how this fool taught me how to ride a fucking bike traumatizing dude when he i look back at bomb it. a hill so <laughs> i was so scared of riding a bike and I, I used to always ride with training wheels mm -hmm. right and if i was living at the duplex at the time i couldn't have been more than the age of six or seven six six seven around there so oh, way earlier than me so yeah yeah because i'm a normal kid right and i wanted friends so yeah so i i wouldn't ride the bike without the training wheels and uh -huh. so my dad got so fucking upset at me i shit you not it was like midnight I don't know the exact time, but it was pitch black outside. It was a thunderstorm in Sacramento, raining. I'm talking about thunder, like boom, lightning coming down. Yeah. Dragged me out of my fucking bed, took me outside while it's raining, grabbed the fucking bike <laughs> without the tricycle wheels. He goes, you're, you either ride this bike or you're not going inside. And so I'm outside. He waited for the storm. He so, literally, <laughs> he, was, he was telling your mom, like, listen. Well, on. he was trying to teach me how to Thursday ride that day. And he got so frustrated. <laughs> my mom was like, go inside. It's raining. Like, we'll teach him another time. But yeah. he's been, he was already trying to teach me how to ride this without training wheels for about a couple of weeks. Okay. I just wouldn't do it because I was so scared. So he literally threatened to beat my fucking ass until I learned how to ride this bike. Wow. So I just remember, I can still remember till this day, crying and the rain mixing it with the tears. Because <laughs> that's why I 
know this why. rain is salty. Yeah. I'm, like, I don't know if I'm crying or if it's just the rain. <laughs> so I just, but I learned how to ride the bike you after that day. I learned after that day I could ride the bike. Wow. But he would not let me go inside the house until I could ride the bike. So parents at home, if you're listening, another advice your kids. <laughs> here: if you're teaching your kid how to ride a bike and they can't, wait for a giant rainstorm. Yeah. And that's how you do Wait it. Wait for Zeus to throw thunderbolts at your kids <laughs> and then fucking throw them out My dad waited for the lightning bolt. He goes, it's a dangerous outside. <laughs> he puts, and, on, he uh, puts a lightning rod in the back of your fucking on tricycle. On my bike. <laughs> <laughs> you go faster. I actually have superpowers, guys. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't ride a bike, you die. <laughs> that's what he was saying to me. Legit. Wow. Remember that shit like it was yesterday. Just wow. him yelling at me. Keep going! <laughs> like in Korean, just keep going! <laughs> don't yeah. stop or you don't have a dinner! <laughs> just like yelling at me. You want a water for dinner? <laughs> Fat the boy! <laughs> I'm like, yeah. oh my god. But I remember wow. when, I, when I finally Trauma did it. Trauma works, bro. Trauma my mom works. came out and started fucking cursing my dad out. He's like, are you fucking crazy? Yeah. It's raining outside. He needs to learn. And I'm like, ah. But smooth as fuck. Wow! Yeah, just everyone in the neighborhood, perfect. everyone in the neighborhood is like, "Yo, that family loves bike riding. They take this shit seriously." <laughs> yo. You're gonna be the Lance Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your ball. And he cuts it off. He, he taught me. He definitely hated seeing weakness in us because yeah. when I found out later on in life was that my dad didn't. He also did, hated these qualities about himself, but he hated seeing the qualities that he saw in his own father. Mm. So my grandpa, quick, sh like long story Dude, short, that's with the him, most like dad shit ever, huh? Yeah. So he's trying to correct yeah, these behaviors sure. that he hates seeing. <laughs> so he, my my grandpa actually used to be pretty wealthy. Uh, he was an owner of this like Tupperware factory. So my grandpa had this habit of kind of being too nice and trusting other people to do things, right? So he wasn't very knowledgeable about his own stuff. Long story short with that, he went bankrupt. All of his partners stole all of his fucking money. Oh. Damn. So my dad has always had trust issues with people. So when he sees like that type of weakness, like fragility in somebody, he hated that shit. It made him angry and obviously he took it out on us yeah but it just turned out that his kid had mad fucking anxiety he didn't know how to deal with it like yeah. ordering yeah. food i couldn't do that shit i couldn't talk to people but i was a really goofy kid but when it came to interacting with new people i fucking sucked at that shit yeah. mm -hmm. so whenever he saw me do something that he thought was terrible that he thought was a bad trait to have because he was scared that i was going to end up like his father yeah he was so severe about it so he would either like beat my ass or make me do extreme things that i didn't want to do yeah like going to the store and working at the store and having to deal with customers. Yeah. My brother didn't have to deal with that, but I had to deal with it all the time. But it turned out to be a great skill later on. Yeah. Sure, yeah. But, you know. But it was torture in the he, moment. He could have done it other ways. <laughs> yeah. You know? How did you figure all this out? Did you talk to him about it? Or my mom. Your mom told you? Because my dad doesn't talk about this stuff. Yeah. But my mom is like his translator. So she'll say like, hey, remember when you were a kid and you would, you know, this, it was because, you know, your your grandpa was such a fuck up. So uh, he hated seeing that in you. He was like, and you were a scared kid. You were scared of everything yeah. you don't want to do shit so when i tell these kids sometimes when you guys ask for advice and you're asking me well how did you do this like you know it's not easy for me because you know you could go and talk to anybody you do stand up i'm like that shit had to i had to work on that really hard yeah right like, i was frightened of the world like i just didn't you know, you know what's true though is like because i felt like i felt like that way when i was a kid too like i was very shy mm -hmm. i wouldn't talk to anybody and i was like kind of afraid to talk to people but with that being like being afraid of that it kind of teaches you how to be like okay well I gotta do something about it. And it kind of yeah. actually, the weaknesses actually kind of make you turn that into strengths after yeah. after a, a period of time, you know? Even with the, with the, my, yeah. my dad didn't like the way I got bullied. And I, I got bullied, I understood why. Easy target. Same. Yeah, so same. I would have done the same. If I if I was now and I went back in time, yeah. I saw myself, I would have taken my lunch money for sure. Same. <laughs> but uh, my dad wouldn't let me go back home until I confronted the people who bullied me. Mm. So I, Damn, I wasn't bro. allowed to come back home. Yeah. Like I remember getting shit jacked from me or stolen and my dad would be like where's your stuff he goes oh they took it from me he goes cool well closes the door when you get your stuff back come back home uh, and so i'm like well, what the fuck am i supposed to do so that's when david grabbed the pencil went to the kid stabbed him in the face <laughs> yeah. and was like what happened this podcast is brought to you by cbd farmhouse if you haven't heard of cbd farmhouse well you will very soon because cbd farmhouse when it comes to their products stands out above the rest and i'm not just saying that because i actually use a lot of their products uh, before they became a uh, a sponsored brand i was actually using them even before that so the the freezing roll-on is money 
specifically if you're sore or if you have some kind of aches. I use it all the time. Specifically, I kickbox and I work out and that has been a savior. If you haven't had their gummies, use it when you're uh, feeling anxious. If you have anxiety attacks a lot, CBD gummies are a godsend. And on top of that, if I just want to sleep really well, I eat one of the gummies right before I sleep and it just helps me to relax. If you're getting this stuff before uh, December 15th, they actually have a really great deal on holiday bundles that you can get for yourself or give out as a gift and it's super discounted as it is but if you're not check it out for all my genius brain listeners you can get 15% off any order if you just plug in code brain at checkout that's at cbdfarmhouse.com once again cbdfarmhouse.com and use code brain to get 15% off today yeah i I I think that's i mean i think it sounds like your dad was a little extreme with it but i think that's definitely the right way to go too because in life like you have to because bullying doesn't stop Mm -hmm. in elementary school there's bullies in the adult world all the time and Mm -hmm. if you let people walk all over you then you aren't gonna have shit you know so i mean that does need to be instilled in somebody but but when i got older too that's what i started figuring out because i used to have this really bad habit of punching shit when I get angry mm. and I still have oh, the habit walls, of yeah. breaking uh-huh. stuff right <laughs> mm-hmm. so but later on I started becoming smarter with my mouth so mm. that's when it was like right. you know if you could demoralize another human being with your words right. so win. that's when you win right. like it's way better than beating somebody's ass yeah. right yeah right because even if I got into I still felt bad because I felt barbaric it's like you know I, I couldn't just talk this shit well, out well as you get older you realize like that's not an option anymore like you yeah. can't always just beat the fuck up yeah right, right right like when you're a kid you're in a cool like you're in a bubble where it's like kind of okay to do things like this. Not okay, but like it's not necessarily the most frowned upon. But no, as you get yeah. older, there's a lot more, you know, consequences like this going the, to jail. I, I, <laughs> yeah, for real. In, in junior high, I remember the time where I was like, it kind of clicked in my head. I was like, hey, you could just kind of just roast people and tell them to shut the fuck up without having to get into fist fights. Yeah. There's this dude, his name was uh, Sean Baker. Big old black kid, right? And motherfucker thought he had jokes. By the way, Sean Baker, you owe me a dollar because you borrowed it from me and you had got that fruitopia then you moved school. So that's why you, you fucking bitch. Yeah, fuck you, <laughs> yeah. Sean Baker. Man, he was a big ass dude though. I was like I'm this height when I was I'm like sorry. in eighth grade. Uh-huh. So he was like even taller than me then. Damn. Big ass motherfucker. He actually looked like Biggie. But this dude in class roasted my ass with this fucking comment that got that made everybody laugh it was so stupid but why the crowd behind you was hard yeah yeah it's because we were learning about like the it was a history t- teacher and he was he was talking about fucking jaundice or something right and you know like, jaundice your eyes get yellow and, and you have like your skin gets yellow right and he and he, he just said something light like he was like he's like well david had jaundice his whole life this boy yellow as fuck you know <laughs> that's like, funny. Joke. and the whole that's funny class well. started laughing and, and you know that's like romance shit. when he said that shit i you know everybody was laughing and he just called me like jaundice because they ain't like yellow eyes yeah, and all yeah, sort of yeah. stuff right. no some shit like that no. jaundice is the one you got yellow eyes right yeah I, yeah I, yeah I, can't you like turn yellow too can yeah or some jaundice? shit like that yeah, but, but it was your eyes, your uh, eyes it was that disease away. that he well, was Michael making Jordan, fun yeah. of so when i came in the next Andrew. class like for like a couple of weeks he kept on calling me jaundice and he's like a big dude like he probably beat my ass right and so i just kept thinking like man i gotta I got to one up this floor. Everybody's going to just keep laughing at me in class. And right. so finally we were talking in class and I remember this joke, man, I felt so good. It, we were learning um, about Africa or some shit. Right. And there was like a national nice. geographic picture. Right. Nice. And I was like, I looked and in the middle of class. I go, look, it's Sean Baker's family picnic. Uh, and then everybody starts dying yeah. laughing. No, like, and that's the thing. It's like, like growing up, I was never the best. Like I wasn't a roaster. I wasn't roasting people. But like yeah. you have to have something. You gotta have something. You gotta yeah. say something. There was one kid that used to always make fun of me, but he would always say like Asian jokes, like "Oh, look a lampshade" or whatever. And then like he, he was kind of like dirty. Like we would always make like we would always make fun of him. So like you know we I made a stupid joke about a garbage truck drove by and I was like, "Hey, look, Michael, your your mom's coming to pick you up." And then I killed at the time. Like, and the teacher was like, "That's, That's a respectable." She was like, "Job, nice. how dare you?" <laughs> <laughs> but like everybody, like I remember when we were kids too, is like, I was like, I was probably one of like three Asian kids in like elementary school. So anytime somebody would say China or like, I remember there was a gong that would go off sometimes like on like TV. I forgot what the fuck it was, but all the kids would look and turn at me and they would like look at me like, yeah. and I'm like, fuck it, motherfuckers. Well, we had a lot of Asian uh, kids in our school, so that wasn't happening too much. It was like, it was like 70% Asian and the rest was like black. All the schools, oh, well, actually, except for my middle school, but like. I was I was always kind of like that token 
there's an Asian person there, you know, like, and I was like, yeah. but that, oh. that word, those, oh. the word battles killed because he he <laughs> fucked up, and the reason why he lost that exchange was because he got mad and he was pulling the race card. He was like, oh, he's saying racist shit to me, right? And the teacher oh, uh, was like a really cool teacher. He goes, tight. he goes, you know, last week you literally pulled your eyes back and called him yellow eyes. So he goes like, you gotta let it go, right? Oh, that's <laughs> so, sick. That's yeah. tight. Yeah. That is dope. yeah. Teacher that's was really dope. dope. It's yeah. like if you're gonna say that stuff to him. You can't you can't doors be mad about open, that right, stuff. Yeah. And the then everybody was clowning on him because he fucking tattletailed to the teacher. He's yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I was like, oh, words are way better than fucking you know, right. hitting somebody. Yeah. Because yeah, it, it hurt his feelings so bad that he actually told on me to the teacher. And the teacher's like, you just fucking made ching chong jokes at him last and you're week. Like, ching chong, bing bong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Class. So he's like, no, we're not he's having like, that. But that's not racist. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, the, and the, we asked we had to apologize to each other after. Obviously, Sorry for calling it saying your family is uh, African. That's yeah, but you still owe me my dollar for that fruitopia, bitch. <laughs> yeah, motherfucker, we're coming for that dollar. Yeah, yeah David you, is not me. If you can cut somebody up with your words, that's that's the shit. My problem was always I would get too mad. Like, I can playfully joke around, but like that when when if I knew someone was really trying to fuck with me, I would just like the heat would yeah. build up. Oh, and like the I would time, just be like fuck you, bitch. Like, I would just get mad. Like and the then times like, you beat the fuck out of that guy at the uh, at the Santa Barbara party because he she said you were gay and you're like, what the fuck you said to me? You beat I love pussy. Ass. Yeah, but that was, <laughs> I love pussy, bro. I love it. Like, no, it's because he said he was joking. He yeah, was like, fuck that. Like, like, I was like, what was the joke? And he was like, oh, you guys are faggots. It's like, oh, sick joke, bro. Sick, sick, punch joke, line guy. sick joke, dude. Well, we got to fight now. <laughs> I'm going to Well, that was, the, that was the death calling card back in the day. If you call somebody the F word, yeah. Yeah. it was done. It's like, oh, you, you got to fight now. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a... I think that's fair. I think yeah, that's a fair game. Fair game. Those are fighting words. That's the thing. Yeah, bro. You 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 say anything to, to you say an insult to somebody that you don't really know that well. Just be ready to fucking fight. Yeah, be ready. Or make it real. It's got to be. It's got. You got to know how to dance on that line. You yeah. know, some but people very don't few know how to people dance on that line. You're do. like, wait, what is this shit? Not many people know how to do that though. Yeah, like, like real banter. Like takes like a charm, like a fun, yeah. real cleverness. Is so scary though, man. It I, is. Really scary. I just scares the shit out of me, man. Yeah. So let's just not fight. Let's just be peaceful. I don't want to fight people. anybody. I think when, when there's so much more uh, stories of fighting when you're younger because when you're younger you don't care yeah like all these like same. Yeah, all these same. fight stories are all like when you're super young like now middle it's, school now i'm scared shitless i don't yeah. know if somebody has a gun i don't know if they're a trained fucking fighter right. you because know you're what? an adult and you know that like oh these are possibilities now you right know? there's just too much to lose yeah too much to lose i just yeah. i can't imagine like me being in the middle of the street and somebody calls me a little bitch and i just start throwing at it i'm just like yeah i just go yeah i'm like nice dude whatever walk away with it yeah and that's a mature adult. Well, I think when you get older, you don't have as much ego. Yeah. Like when you're young, it's all about ego and bravado. For you some wanna, people. Right. You want, well, you just took shit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what happened? No, no, no. no. What yeah. up, Ching Chong? That's me. Yeah, no, actually, yeah, that was me. That was me. We'll start but, playing the Asian flu. <laughs> you're like, I'm, it's me, the token Asian guy. <laughs> you know, like, hey guys, look. And they're like, oh, I'm just kidding. I have to do that. Pull my eyes back. You know? <laughs> I have to do that. But like, grow, like when I first started dealing with that kind of stuff, as like a like in high school, because that was like very different. Because in middle school, I would just be like, all right, well, I'm gonna fight you, and I would try to like fight people. And then in middle school, in high school, I was like, all right, I probably can't get away with this shit because I weigh 105 pounds, and I can't be fighting people. So I just was like, all right, well, let me just try to be a likable guy so nobody would make fun of me. <laughs> and I was like, it, it kind of didn't work out, and everyone beat my ass anyway. <laughs> nah, wow. but no one was like 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 that to me when I was in high school. Or like my freshman year, yeah. But after that, I was like, nah. Little really bitch, wrong. dude. Yeah, I was a little bitch. You're a little bitch. Still am, baby. <laughs> Still a bitch till this day, dude. Because sometimes Ooh. I don't realize when someone's like, oh, you were talking shit. Like, you were kind of being a dick. And I, I, when I sit down and think about it afterwards, I'm like, oh, yeah, that guy was trying to be an asshole to me. But eventually, like, that you, is a, all, that all you have to, to do, to. all you have to do is just be like, hey, fuck you. And they'll be like, oh, okay, my bad. Yeah. Or they'll just, be, oh, they won't do it anymore. Dude, the, you, you know what? You have to threaten somebody. You know yeah. when we talk about yeah. that whole thing where sometimes, like, I feel, you know, we have these moments where somebody com comes at us and we feel like we're getting bullied because we're, you know, typically Asian people tend to be a lot more quiet and very yeah, nice. Yeah. If I was going to pick on anybody that's from any race, it would, it would probably be Asian people. Racist. I don't give a fuck who you are. <laughs> I no, really but like, don't if, care. If I'm a bully and I'm like, I'm going to pick on somebody, I'm going to be like, oh, I'm gonna, this guy's not going to say anything to me most of the time. Mm. I'm like, hey, four eyes, why don't you go play your fucking you? Like, you can say this shit all day. And most of the time, they'll probably be like, they probably wouldn't say shit. Mm. You know? this is, so my buddy Ed was talking about this time he was at Ikea and he had, this is like a small example of it. He had a shopping cart and um, he you know, walked away for a second or whatever, something happened. But this guy walked and he just took his cart from him. And he's like, what the fuck? And, and then Ed walks up to him. He goes, hey, that's my cart, asshole. And the guy looks, he just laughs. He goes, laughs at me, just walks away. Yeah. 
And, you know, Ed is just like in shock. And he's, he's a relatively nice guy. And he's just pissed and fuming. And then our buddy Dan, he's half white, half Korean, but he looks full white. Uh-huh. And Ed's like, yeah, this guy fucking stole our sh- our cart. And Dan's like, who? That guy? And Dan looks at him. He goes, hey, fuck you. <laughs> right? But then he walks up to Dan. And he goes, hey, my bad, man. I didn't know. And he apologizes to Dan. But he fucking laughs at Ed's face. Yeah, exactly. See, and see, that's the shit that we're talking about. It's like, <laughs> if, if Ed was this white guy would he have done the same but it was and it was the same situation and dan was way more aggressive yeah but he looks at dan he goes i'm sorry man i apologize like i didn't know it was yours but to ed he tells him to go fuck off and he laughs at his face yeah. huh. so that's like those moments where you see like yeah. oh you think we're like a bunch of bitches mm. that's what it is like most people think that you know mm. it's true like and that's why I had to punch that dude in the face because he yeah. was trying to bully me. Yeah. yeah. You had to I remember in high school, there was a buddy of mine who I was actually like good friends with. Like we were friends. And I, I remember I just, I was like pissed or something. And he was sitting in my seat. And I was like, hey, bro, get the fuck out of my seat. Like, let me sit. This is my seat. Mm-hmm. And we almost like fought in the fucking classroom. But I remember I was so mad. And think going thinking back on it, I was, I would have probably just been like, yeah, hey, whatever. Who gives a shit? Like now. Yeah. Right. But back then I was like, yo, get the fuck out of my seat, bro. And this is a guy that I, I'm still like pretty chummy with to this day. But I remember like almost getting in a fight with this fool. And then he was like, all right, just fucking take your seat then, dude. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, chill, damn. But at first he was like, nah, man, what the fuck? And I was like, no, fuck you, bro. Get the fuck out of my seat. Like, you know, this is my fucking seat, motherfucker. Like, yeah, I right. sit here every fucking day. Like, why are you, now you want to take it? You know, I was yeah, getting yeah, mad. Yeah. He's like, why don't we step outside? I was like, yeah, let's step fucking outside then. You know? And he was like, all right, just take the chair, man. We still cool? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, <laughs> he called my bluff. God but it was just like, it, 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 we're still and cool we both we're realized still cool. like, oh, wait, this is dumb. Yeah. That, I mean, you know, but the fact that I was even like, the fuck out of here, man. You know? Yeah. It, 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 he was like, okay, well, all right then. There's some of these like weird bu- right, bullying moments, even in junior high, I can remember where it's just, everyone's testing the waters. Yeah. And they exactly always are. There's, well, this guy actually ended up in jail. I mean, he's been there for a while. He might have killed me. But we <laughs> his name, Tree Frog. <laughs> <laughs> Tree Frog. <laughs> no, his name was Shaka Hassan. Wow. I mean. But he was like a this dude flunked like a gajillion times. So I think he was like 30 at, in seventh grade. Nice. But, but you know, he was he didn't grow to be that big. But I remember he was trying to steal my uh he was trying to make copy off of my homework, but he didn't ask. He just kind of took the paper. He goes, hey, I'm going to use this real quick. And wow. I, I just fucking snatched it out of his hand. I'm like, the fuck are you doing? He goes, I'll beat your fucking ass. But, you know, like I said, I was like already like 5'10", 5'9", at like seventh grade. So yeah, that's great. Yeah. I stood up and I was just towering over him. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? You know? <laughs> and I just snatched it right back. And it was just one of that moments where I was like, fuck, why does everybody keep trying to punk me? And it was that weird, it's that weird balance of being a nice guy and not being a pushover. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that hard balance. Because yes. obviously if... If I showed you a picture of what I looked like in seventh and eighth grade, everybody would have bullied me. It's very easy yeah, to. Yeah, no. Because I was so goofy too. I never really caused a lot of trouble. Yeah. But obviously, I'm not going to let somebody just punk me like that. Because it, it'll happen consistently for the whole, like eighth grade would have been a nightmare for me if I just always let it happen. Yeah, of course. And even times, most of the times too, I had to stand up even though I know I was going to get my ass beat. I just had to do it. I feel like yeah. that was the age for a lot of people. Like there was a turning point, right? It's either, and same with me, like seventh, eighth grade, I got a lot of people like trying to like test me a lot. And to the point where I was like, I didn't know what to do to the point where I was like, all right, well, I have to start like, I just got to get my ass beat. I'm going to do like, something. I have to like fight these, like I have to like harm these people. I have to do something. Like one of my buddies who was actually a good friend of mine, like going into like seventh grade, I think. And he was, he was the kid that would go to school there and I was new. Right. But he would like, he would shit like this fool had big ears too, but he would clown on my fucking ears. Like, that's yo, hilarious. Like, yo, you fucking satellite to ears. You can get direct TV with those things. As he flies like, you know? away with his own ears. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this fool had big ass. He, he was the big ear guy before I got there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then he would like clown on me all the time. And I was like, yo, I thought we were fucking like homies, bro. But he, he hey, would try- big ear bros for life. Yeah, yeah, and and then to the point where I was like, I'm out the fucking like, and one time like I, I, like I like he he said some shit. He called me like a chink or some shit. I tackled him and I was like trying to like I was like giving him dead legs. I was like, fuck you, dude. And then then it stopped and it was cool. And then more people tried doing it. Uh And then I had to like do that to them too. And I was like, it's that weird moment where (laughs) you just have to let. you gotta just let people know you you're just not an easy pushover. Yeah, yeah, right. And then I, I just remember being very mad. Like all during those years, like yeah. where I just was mad all the time. Like yeah. I, I just was like, fuck man. Like can't catch a break. Like fuck, yeah. leave me alone. Yeah, yeah. Like fuck man. I gotta be like the sto. Like I, I felt like I had to be like stoic or something. Like, cause I wanted to be like a jokey, jokey guy, you know? But as soon as I would crack jokes, people would take it too far. And then I'd have to like try to fight people. And I was yeah, like, right. what the fuck is this about? Yeah, that sucks. You know? But I think that's, that's just the age, right? That's the age range where 
you're trying to figure out what you're about or who, you, who you're supposed to be, quote unquote, right? Yeah. Well, people would just at that, I think specifically at that age, a lot of young people are trying to establish their dominance by pushing somebody else down. Yeah. yeah. And so they would be known as a strong person, the cool guy, if they could bully somebody because they look like the alpha male. It's yeah. just as barbaric and caveman as it gets. Oh, yeah. You know? And also you're dealing with a lot of insecurity at that time. Mm -hmm. too. Yeah, a lot yeah, of like it's, it's white girls and then you feel like, you know, you're just, you don't even know who you are. You feel like kind of intimidated by other people. Yeah. You know, like, let me just punk this dude and feel like somewhat good about myself, you know? So there's that going on too. It's just a, a weird, weird fucking age. But it, the right thing, you have to stand up. That's yeah. the only thing. That's really the only option. You got to give a little resistance at least. A little bit. You got to make even, you got to make the other person's life a little harder if they're trying to fuck with you. Right. No matter what. And even if you get your ass kicked at the end of the day, it's like, okay, well, I, if I fuck with this dude, I might I'll, I might win, but it's going to be a fight. Yeah. You know, it's going to be. This, this gonna one cost dude, his name, was, yeah. uh, his name was fucking Gerardo. Big Gerardo. ass mother. This fucking fool had like Alex's head. But he's like my height. Mm. So this guy was huge. And he was a relatively nice dude. But I don't know what got into him where out of nowhere we were like homies. And then he tried to make me the butt of the joke every time. Yeah. But I don't know. I guess he got Shit's a weird. high off of that shit or some shit. But, Another weird thing. Too, but yeah. he's a big guy. I remember. We didn't fight. But I just remember in my mind thinking, this guy's going to kill me. <laughs> but I just couldn't let him keep doing it. Yeah. You yeah. Can't. And so I, we just it got to that point where we were in, in the middle of the quad at uh, James Rudder Middle School. And I was like, you know what? After school, let's just fucking go. I'm going to beat your fucking ass. And, you know, I'm a geeky dude. Thick ass glasses or whatever. Yeah. But I'm a big guy. I'm like, we're going to fucking, th we're going to do this shit, right? And he meets me after school. And I just remember in my mind thinking like, this guy's going to. Fuck me up. Because he was one of those kids that are just buff for no fucking reason. Yeah. yeah he didn't yeah. really weight train or anything else. He's just like really big it's fucking good genetics. It's good yeah. genetics. He just came up to me and he was like, hey, man, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. And I was like, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> this guy would have hey, killed what, me. Hey, what a nice guy, though. Yeah. What a really fucking nice. How old were you guys? We were, uh, what? 12, 13. For him Damn. to apologize to you, because most boys won't do that shit. They'd be like, yeah. fuck you. Especially Because he could tell age. I was like, I was kind of, I was more hurt because he was supposed to be my friend. I was like, fuck this. We're going to throw down. And he's just like, hey, man, I'm sorry, man. I apologize. And I just, just wave of relief. I was like, he would have murdered me. <laughs> he would have had oh, his God. way with me. He was so strong. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but he's just a really sweet dude, but I don't know why he did that. But I think it was just him being young. Mm -hmm. and Contesting. Feeding trying off that out, energy. Yeah. But, right. But of we course. were friends. So it was like, I don't think he really considered the fact that he was hurting my feelings. Yeah. And he thought maybe I was in on and the then joke. then he realized and then he apologized. Let's give a round of applause for Geraldo. Yeah. Geraldo, Geraldo. Geraldo. thank you so That's much. That's how you Geraldo. operate your life. Okay? That's how Geraldo. you do it. That yeah. is nice. Do you have any more questions? That's the main one today, actually. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably more, but they're so fucking long. People have like real problems here. And I don't want to fuck up your guys' life, dude. Let's see another advice. Yeah, let's do another one. Let's do another one. Let's see what's up. Let's see what's come popping on, with come on, these and stop, people. Stop sending dick size questions, man. No, let's answer it. Wait, yeah. <laughs> let's answer How many it. dick size questions are you getting? A lot. They're like, hey, man, my dick's like 12 inches. Is that too small? I'm like, man. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that's tiny, dude. Ah, uh, tight. Here we go, dude. We're going to leave this one <laughs> anonymous. Stupid. All right. Go. Perfect. Uh, they're hoping that Edric isn't on this podcast, but he's not. I'm sorry. But we have two uh, great guests here anyways. So I dated someone for about four and a half years before we broke up. I really felt like we loved each other and had plans for marriage, but he had suddenly broken up with me saying he'd rather focus on his career than settle down. We kept in contact on and off after the breakup after a year later. Ooh, that's always a bad sign, man. Hey. Uh, we, have st we started seeing each other again. However... There are some twists to the story. Ooh, girl, you getting saucy. Yeah, baby. <laughs> First, the last year or two of our relationship, he stopped having sex with me. What? Always a red flag, right? Either yeah. he's masturbating frequently or he's cheating on you. He would always say he was tired and not in the mood. Uh, just as a preface, we were long distance. Oh, he'd definitely nah, do a boo, something. Yeah, right, boo, right, right, skip right. him. Get rid Why? of him. <laughs> uh, but even during the times we traveled together or visit each other, he would still not be interested in sex. He would never approach me first, and I always had to make the first move. Damn, I would, I wish. For Dog, me, for, I, for me, fucker, for me, I could feel he didn't want it, so my body naturally started rejecting it. Whenever we tried to have sex, he literally couldn't get it in. Um, sex, was, sex was painful, basically impossible. Uh, plus, I started to find uh, porn Wait, on he, his computer. He couldn't get it in. He, he like he that's what he was soft. Oh. Uh, it really ruined my self esteem. Knowing oh, that he would rather he uh, would rather watch porn than be big. intimate with me. 
I confronted him about it and he just treated it like it was no big deal. It really felt shitty going to bed next to him. It felt like he wasn't attracted to me anymore. He would always unavailable. fall asleep before I even came to bed. He made little to no efforts to be intimate with me afterwards. I felt rejected and so upset. Damn, girl. Swerve uh, this fool in a heartbeat. Yeah, absolutely. Swerve this guy. Uh, now I mentioned that we have started seeing each other again. Although we had been in contact, he made it clear that he did not want to get back into a relationship with me. But he would always help me since I'm living abroad as a grad student in his home country right now. I started developing feelings for him again. Then one day he decided to give me his iPad to use for studying. And you best know, I snooped. He had he had told me. <laughs> he guy's didn't very see, smart, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's not very smart at all. He didn't see anyone after we broke up, but his iPad said otherwise. Of course. Actually, he started seeing another girl in the last few months of our relationship. He cheated. I felt like. Oh, of course he did, right? <laughs> I felt like absolute shit after finding this out and seeing all the photos. Why have photo evidence, bro? And on yeah, an iPad. Dude, what is it's up? Bad. Okay, yo, yo, yo. If you're, yeah, that okay, dog. If and you're cheating. She's like fucking and like. <laughs> <I> know, <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, dog, if you're cheating, don't have, don't collect your own evidence, bro. I'm sure that's been said before, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd be cracking up if the photos were of them at a park. I'm like, you brought your iPad to take photos? <laughs> yeah, what's the matter with you? You fucking dweeb. My grandma does that. Well, does she? Apologies yeah, to your grandma. He also admitted to have slept with other women after the breakup. After many days of thinking, I decided to give him a chance. Girl, you got to fuck. Yo. Him. What are you doing? Bail. Yeah. Bro, get rid of this guy. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. I haven't forgotten. I haven't forgiven him for the cheating and lying. And we are not officially back together, but I'm willing to see how he behaves as as, as if he has changed. No. Yeah. He's not going to change. Yo. And, if, gonna change. and no. if I could ever yeah. trust uh, this motherfucker again, I know we have a lot of issues to figure out, understatement, but one that still bothers me. <laughs> did is, you write that or did you say yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> is the sex. Even now, I feel he is not attracted to me sexually. He will he will give me smooches and call me cute. But he listen, unless he's eating that pussy, he's yeah. not unless interested. Unless he's eating that yeah. box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that box, dude. That He's Amazon talk, box. That fur yeah. box. That fur yeah. box, baby. Yeah. Blindfolded. All up in the muff. But he doesn't that, seem to see me. Bird seed. Get that bird, bird, bird But he box. doesn't seem to see me as a woman. I'm worried things will repeat themselves. Uh, I, can, I can't make him feel attracted to me, but sex is such an important part of a, of a relationship. Yo, it 100% is. I yeah, don't want to feel important. like how I did before. Why was he able to have sex with so many other women, but not me? Uh, why would Probably your head game is bad. Just kidding. Uh, why would he prefer to watch porn than have sex with me? Is it normal for men to consistently watch porn while in a relationship? I could truly feel that he loved me and cared for me, but why does it feel like he is not attracted to me i'm confused and would like to hear your advice thank Yo. you how do we break all this down young lady number one um i could break this down in so many different ways and Let's what you're talk about the sex now well when Let's you're going through right now <laughs> and, and the reason why i could talk about this is because i know people who have been in similar maybe not as severe situations as you but right now you think the problem is him the problem is actually you you're the problem, not in the relationship per se. Get right you, up on the camera. You, you, Get have, right up in there. <laughs> you have an issue of value of yourself. You actually don't value yourself enough. Yeah. Oh, you remind me of myself when I was 17, when I was with somebody thinking that my value was linked to the person that I was with rather than myself. That's your biggest issue right now. You're waiting for somebody to change when they have no want to change. Yeah. What the fuck are you waiting for? Yeah, right. What are you waiting for? Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah, I think it's important to ask yourself, like, why am I tolerating this? Yeah. Because obviously this isn't how she knows that this isn't how a relationship should be. So you should ask yourself, like, what is it? A, why? What are my insecurities or what am I lacking that I think that this is OK for this to be potentially somebody that I'm with again? Like yeah. he cheated. He's sexually not there. Like there's so many red flags. You're not happy. Look, if you're butt naked and his dick is soft, there should be a moment where you guys are having conversations with each other. Clearly, you seem like a young person or if you're older and you're not having a sit down conversations with the person that you're with, that's going to be a big issue. Red flag. So what you're trying to do right now, what I feel anyways from the information that you're giving me is that you're not really tackling things head on which I don't even think you should have to tackle this stuff head on because it seems like it's already been dealt with. You just, you're waiting for somebody to change. But if you if you do want to change, you guys can't sit down and have a conversation. How are you ever going to progress? Yeah. If you can't say to him, hey, when I'm trying to fuck you and your dick is soft, what the fuck is going on? And he just goes, oh, it's not a big deal. You're not yeah. in a relationship with the person at all. That right. person's in a relationship with himself. Mm -hmm. so, right. And also just, cut, th this one's done. Yeah, this relationship's it. over, this been it. over for a long he, time. It sounds like- Cut your he, losses, stop wasting your time. He might he might be like a very nice guy, but he's treating you like shit at the end of it, right? Because when you're in a relationship, you're trying to take care of the person. It's a, it's a mutual understanding, but it sounds like he's not trying to fucking come around. Because when you ask the question too, is got are you know guys watching porn normal? I mean, what's normal? I guess if you guys know about it, 
Yeah. You know, if you know that he does, and he knows that he does, then I guess it's very relative. Like what's considered normal. But but also like with the sex thing, right? It's like the one thing that guys could really get on board with in a relationship is probably sex across the board, right? (laughs) Right, right, right. And if this if you're like kind of throwing yourself at this dude and he's just like, Nope, not today, it's either he's gay or he's fucking somebody else, or yeah, he's just which a fucking asshole. Turns out he was fucking somebody else. Right, yeah. exactly. So multiple people. Right? And what what you're doing right now, you're saying is when he cheats on you and he has he has sexual interactions with somebody else, you go, "What's wrong with me?" Yeah, there's nothing, nothing wrong, wrong with right. you. Exactly. No. You guys aren't on the same page. He's uh, clearly a scumbag if he's yeah. doing that behind your back and still willing to keep you around, knowing that he has no interest in you. Yeah, that's fucking a weird. That's a weird thing. Because yeah. if it's like if you're if he's not interested, why stay around? Yeah, fuck, fuck this guy. And he, he's, he, there's not there's nothing to gain out of this situation. It's a lose lose situation. Here's the this thing, yeah, too, right. young lady, you have all the power right yeah. now. You for can real leave. Yeah, you can. Li- I, it's easier said than done because sometimes I feel like when you're in these like committed, loving relationships where you want to love somebody so bad, it's hard for you to step out of it because you're scared of what you're going to lose. Yeah, right. And not much. You ain't gonna lose much. You're not yeah, really not losing all. much. You could always find somebody that'll find you attractive, even if it's not this person. He's not even trying to do the bare minimum. He's not. <laughs> this, my she, motherfucker got an F plus. <laughs> yeah, bro. He's like, hey, I'm not cheating on you, but here's the proof. Right? Yeah, <laughs> check it out. On I'm the out. iPad. <laughs> and on my Mac you, <laughs> my desktop when I was fucking yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck, bro? he's got a laptop on <laughs> his wallpaper is just a girl with a cum shot on her face and she, he's like what's the problem babe Not yeah. a big it's deal. porn you know I watch porn yeah <laughs> What's what's good about this though is after if just break up with this dude like you literally can only go up yeah for real unless, for real unless the next guy you date just beats you like you're literally on only, top of doing which all this obviously stuff. don't date anybody that beats you that's sign that's yeah. that's step you can one. literally <laughs> but like literally go you can hey, only advice, go up right? you know yeah. what I mean that's good advice that's good bro advice. yeah but that's true though I feel like <laughs> this is one of the I thought. When you said the first thing about how like he doesn't have sex with you, I thought that was gonna be it. Yeah, and yeah. then you kept unloading the rest of the stuff, and I was like, "Oh, bro, you yeah, have done. to delete this well, guy from your she's, life." Yeah, she's a she's fucking victim blaming right now because she's sitting here saying, "Well, why can't he have other sex with women and not me?" That's not the question you should be asking. That's not the issue. Yeah, he's kind of a dirtbag. Yeah, he's guy. kind of a dirtbag. Sure. I don't even care if you, if you hate somebody. I feel like if you hated some girl that you dated. You would never do that to her. A hundred percent. You would never do that. Like you wouldn't go out of your way just to like string her along. You are in a very, let's look at this sentence. This is so sad. He goes, I could truly feel that he loved me and cared for me, but why does it feel like he is not attracted to me? That's a very, very sad sentence. People are really good at, uh, <laughs> some people can be really good at faking that. Not faking it, but like, you know, making it seem that like, oh, I love you and being affectionate. Yeah, he wants to have his time. cake and eat it too. And you're willing to take the abuse because you feel like you love him and he should love you, but he does not. Yeah, yeah. right. Because exactly. that, that ain't true love, no. Yeah, like, cause like I, I, like, I've been cheated on a couple times, right? And like, it doesn't feel fucking great. It's yeah. just kind of yeah, like right. you get blindsided, and you're like, "What the fuck?" And the first thing that you do is tend to say, "Like, what did I do? Yeah, mm-hmm. like, did I do something?" Which sometimes I, you know, if you're in a loving relationship and a long term relationship, and cheating happens, there is. From what I found from my personal experiences with other other friends who have dealt with it, there is a little personal blame, right? So, for example, with um. I, I had a buddy uh, who got cheated on and for him, he had to deal with it by at first he was like upset and enraged. But because I knew this couple, it's not that I could justify the cheating. Right. But I understood the void that she felt because yeah. I know how the relationship how it is, happened. Yeah. Right. So it's like when, when there was a, a, like a coming to Jesus moment, they were opening up. I understood why, mm-hmm. why, why she felt the way that she felt. She felt very unheard. Yeah. She felt that he would talk down to her like she was dumb. And, you know, she found that in somebody else and it was a big mistake and she couldn't, she was like trapped in this world of, I still love this man um, because he has such great qualities. Like he's faithful as fuck, Mm -hmm. but he just doesn't make me feel like I'm a woman and I feel very special. So there is that give and take for sure. You know, so I, I, you know. We can, we can do that scenario where where we look at the cheating situation and both people can take responsibility for why this exactly. happened. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And usually when that happens and both people can understand it, they usually, from what I've seen anyways, like this is like two, three couples, they've been able to work out of it mm-hmm. where they go, 
oh shit, my bad, I fucked up. You yeah. know, I've I've definitely been pushing you aside. Even though I have been cheating on you, you have been like the least priority in my life. Yeah. Right. And because of that, you felt this need to hurt I pushed me. you away or yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't really excuse the cheating that he or she did. Not but right. this but guy took it to another level. This guy's a little weird. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. This, this guy is like, he has like a weird control thing. Because right now from what I'm, what, <laughs> I'm know, like, yo. what I'm inferring from when you're asking about the porn thing, maybe you're kind of alluding that he might have a porn addiction, which is why he can't get hard, right. which is a case because I know somebody yeah. who actually has a porn addiction and he could not get hard because he was masturbating so fucking much. Wow. And so his his version of shit that would turn him on, it was like, it was skewed now. Mm -hmm. It would be like porno shit. So when he would try to fuck, if it wasn't porno shit, it's yeah. like- It wasn't porn, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't real sex. So he couldn't get a fucking erection. Wow. Yeah. So I don't think that's the case because he's fucking other women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, hit right. dick fine. <laughs> Hit dick working good. Yeah, hit dick working really good. Really good. <laughs> a little too good. <laughs> like, you this know. guy is actually killing it. Yeah, but bag. also, it's like... Smorgasburg pushing. <laughs> like, if, if he wasn't necessarily, like, interested in somebody, like, I, I just can't wrap my head around why this guy is, like... Probably because well, she, like, how much you want to bet she does every anything and everything for this guy. Probably, that's probably yeah. true. And yeah. it's just there's comfort things, too. Yeah, that's true. You know, that's true. Here's some real advice. Do you want to be a fucking bitch for the rest of your life? Like you want to be this dude's bitch? That's the David So stamp of approval. Yeah, that's right, how. Right. That's how you make it Fuck a David it. So advice. <laughs> yeah, this is. So I've done the nice stuff. This is my real bitch, advice. Dog? Yeah. yeah, you try and be a but little. But you need fucking... both though. You need the little bit of the fire because you need a fire under your butt for you to be like, you know what? Fuck this fool. Yeah. Yeah. Because clearly he's a fucking. He's taking advantage of you. Yeah, like, what are you worth? Are you? Is this? Is yeah, this? You right. worth this... more than that, girl? I'll tell <laughs> yeah, you. Let me tell you something, baby. Let me tell you. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You don't need this, dude. I tell you something when you wake up that pussy shining baby yeah you, you know got the saying? power you got yeah. the power you'd be quiffing out some glitter if you could baby <laughs> <laughs> you gotta find some fucking this is some wendy williams shit right yeah, you know yeah I mean? absolutely but key though fuck this one oh, yeah on some real shit though like do you value yourself that fucking little where you could be dragged through the fucking trash like that and then you still say what's wrong with me yeah right. have some fucking self-esteem like fucking yeah. believe in yourself a little bit yeah, a little bit what are you waiting around for like yeah, nobody right. here will probably tell you this in your circle they'll probably tell him he's a bad guy he's a bad guy that's already a given you have something that's in your control right now you have a, an ability to leave you can leave yeah and, and you should have a long time ago yeah right. should have. and let me tell you something if you want to message me again after you hear this i'll tell you a way to fuck with his head where he's gonna feel <laughs> fucked up for the rest <laughs> of his really life he's really good yeah. at that yeah if you guys didn't know about the chipotle story about how the guy came up chipotle. 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 chipotle you know the chipotle yeah, yeah. Hey, chipotle <laughs> Yeah, my accent's on point. No, you know was, I didn't know uh, Chipotle was, nice. was French. Yeah, it Chipotle, is. Chipotle, I like that. Yeah, I that's like where that. it actually originated. Oh. Oh, a French Chipotle, guy French. Oh, bonjour, carne asada. Carne asada. I can't even do a French accent. Actually, I can't even do a fucking uh, a French accent. Try go now. You want some fromage? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boom. I took French one. Oh, wow. parfait. That was and I didn't do that well. That was good. Clearly. La douche is shower. That's the only thing. La douche. Girls don't, you guys don't even understand understand like how much power yeah. women have over men you have no idea and like, you need to do. utilize Big it time. some you, some people do more than others but this girl right here girl needs to not. use it and you know why he fucks with you so much is because he knows that no matter what he does to you you will fucking stay yeah and if he's he, an abusive fuck yeah, yeah. and, and like when you pet. leave yeah. he's gonna start crying and it's gonna make you probably want to get back with him but don't buy into because watch watch if you did i'm not telling you, you should this play guy games. number one bullshit this guy. <laughs> yeah i'm not telling you should play games with the people that you with that you're with and you care about but he doesn't care about you so now it's time to play fucking games because imagine if he thinks that you know he has all this power over you and then when he's coming over to give you smooches and you're like what the fuck are you doing yeah could you imagine he's like wait hold on a second i own this girl why is she saying no smooches yeah right, yeah, right. and then he might try to play it off a little bit but you go off you have like a couple of pictures with some random dudes that like you're having the time of your life and you go hey babe, i'm gonna go hang out with my buddies have a great time don't even do shit salty yeah. Don't give people that strength. Mm. Do it in a way. Oh, I'm fucking. I'm yeah, crazy. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it in a way where it's you become a true girl. It. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta make stay sure that it. pussy coming out that coochie. Yeah. Come on, baby. <laughs> Preach. Because imagine too, if he's coming in and you you guys are about to, I don't know, let's say have a date. You're about to cuddle and stuff, and then you go, oh shit, I forgot. I'm gonna hang out with my friends today. Are you cool? He's like, and he starts throwing a fucking fit. And you're like, all right, and you just walk out and do your hey. own thing. Yeah. And then later on, you have a talk with him and you go like, hey, I don't think this is working out. Not angry though, not sad, yeah. but just matter of fact. It's like, yeah. Yeah. You're actually not that dope. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. All right. like, and then you, you just you, walk out. Like, you broke, I, your friends is broke. Yeah. <laughs> you a I pussy ass you. bitch. Yeah. I don't like you. Yeah. Your tooth, 
crazy stank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a dead tooth, man. That's what you gotta tell him. Yeah, and I'm about to make my Please. sweet tea. Yeah, yeah. I'm making millions. Please write back. If he has a dead tooth, that'd be making me very happy. Hilarious. Your that'd tooth is dead like this, but like but, shit. Uh, but also, fuck that dude. And like what David said, you just, you break up with this dude, indifferent. And that's how you do it. Yeah. Just be like, you know what? Because you should be it. indifferent at this point. Yeah, because this dude is—he's being indifferent towards you, and like, he's very disrespectful. This guy. This let guy, me, I don't like this guy. Let this me guy. give you a great number example. one bullshit. This guy. <laughs> let me give you a number one best example. I had this one girl that I was with that I think that I was I was very obsessed with, and she knew that I was obsessed with her, right? Mm -hmm. And she wasn't. I, she was never a bad person, but she had this habit of trying to be with people that she could fix. So in the relationship, she was always top dog, yeah. right? And for her. If the guy that she was with wasn't giving her the right attention or it just wasn't working, she would kind of start talking to somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. So we we broke up and then I was still, like you were still trying to chase after this person for some fucking reason because yeah. they had like this, this, this leash on me. I decided to, you know, gain some balls. Yeah. Like what the fuck am I doing? Mm. Lo and behold, we ended up still being friends. You know, I was very flirtatious with her, but I didn't, I wasn't emotionally invested into her anymore. So... What happened was one day she came over and she was like, so I broke up with um, the guy that I'm with. And there was like an awkward silence. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, did you come over here to tell me that, oh, I choose you now? Yeah. You know, and I remember I looked at her and this was a really good power moment for me. I looked at her, I was like, so what are you doing here? Uh, but, uh, and it was like this uh, awkward uh, silence. Uh, That's like, That was the actual noise she made. She went, oh. <laughs> She was just Nate she Robinson on the floor. <laughs> she was Nate Robinson on the floor and all the Vietnamese fucking spirits looking at her. <laughs> it was Nam Fan staring at her. <laughs> My guy. Yeah. Yay. And so she was just like, I remember she sat there and I just kind of laughed at her. I was like, well, what are you doing here, right? She goes, oh, I'm just, you know, kind of telling you like things are over. I was like, wow. I was like, well, you're going to get with some random dude after this fight, right? You're, you're going to get with some broke ass loser. And I remember she good. was like upset. She goes, no, I'm going to be single. I was like, you're never single. You're like, you're always trying to fix somebody. So right. I guarantee you within a couple months, you're going to find some loser and you're going to be with him. Yeah, right yeah and i could just see the rage in her eyes like yeah. oh you're so wrong you don't know me right yeah. lo and behold she gets together with somebody a couple of weeks later Damn. and it was somebody that she was working with so clearly she was talking with that guy as she, the of other course. relationship was falling apart yeah because when i was with her she did the same thing to me yeah. so i know her especially because she and i were really good friends before we got together mm. so i know her habits mm -hmm. yeah. so you know that was a power trip moment was like oh the fucking tables have turned this is my shit now mm -hmm. yeah you came here because you thought that i was waiting on your beck and call because i flirt i still flirted with her i thought she was super cute mm-hmm but I wasn't emotionally invested into it. Yeah, 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 right. So when she came in with the whole thing of, well, I'm single now, I'm like, cool okay. story. Right. Get the fuck Art out of here. Art and ladies. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. All right, dude. Art I and ladies. Yeah. I did. And yeah. I was like, excuse me? You think you own? <laughs> and she was like, David, why are you talking like that? <laughs> And she starts taking her clothes off because she's super attractive. I was like, you better put your clothes back on, baby, because unless that shit going to be a fucking dinner blanket, I don't need that shit. Unless it's going to be draped over a table, baby, put it back on them tiny titties. <laughs> Damn, did you? That must have actually really happened because there's no way you would have come up with that on the spot. Oh, no, I'm a good improver, good. dude. That's no, 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 that's exactly what you said. No, I did not say that's that exactly to her. She was still my friend. It. Come on yeah, now, yeah. guys. Yeah, that happened word for word, you guys. That was good. Wow. Yeah. Damn. I hated her. I think we're good at advice, man. I think we're solid, I think we dude. knocked that one off the park. Don't date dudes that beat you. Yeah. Well, first, Let's start with that. Right? Yeah. Bang. Emotionally don't, beat you. Don't date beat you. this guy. Don't he, date this guy. This guy. Uh, I don't know, man. Break I, up with this dude. It's over. How yeah, old is this fucker? You see that? I have porn on his iPad and then hand it to you. But also porn that he's in. Yeah. Like fucking yeah. naked pictures. How, yeah, right. Fucking, like... You have to realize how little he thinks of you yeah. to the point where he had the he iPad with dumb. all the evidence. He goes, watch this shit, and I bet you, you still won't fucking leave. Wow. And I bet he probably jokes with his buddies, his all little the degenerate time. buddies that are like, oh, Jigo, check out what I'm doing this to this person. You know, it's like, I'm not, not a cool guy. This not guy, a cool guy. Yeah. This guy, I think he's a... Uh, because this is a form of abuse in a lot it of ways. It is abuse. This right? is straight like, abuse. Yeah. And you, uh, you're you taking it because, you know, he's kind of, what are you, what's that, Stockholm Syndrome? I don't yeah, know. Like, yeah, you're, yeah. you're a prisoner. Well, she's like, yeah, she's just insecure. There's something lacking yeah, where definitely, she, definitely. like, doesn't value herself Fuck for sure. Fuck that shit. You gotta and break up with this dude. He's praying on that. Break up with this dude. He's trash. His dick game, trash. Trash. He can't it even is. get hard. Mm -hmm. you know trash. I mean? trash. Trash. Like, trash. His dick ain't even big, girl. That shit, three inches. You know what? Three inches. Also, his personality, because that boy got nothing going for him. He broke. He ugly. No money. <laughs> Nobody love him. Good luck to the next girl, because I bet you when he ends up with her, she going to find out how small his dick is and lead to. Oh, <laughs> okay. 
and you take that to the fucking bank. That's take that right. motherfucking bank. That's right. You fucking cash that shit, dude. Yeah, yeah. Comes out all shit. diamond and yeah, gold. Dude. That guy sucks. That guy power, number baby. one bullshit. In the comments below, talk about what a shit bag that guy is. Yeah. 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 He's a shit bag, but right now, on the some real advice, you're being a little shit bag yourself because you're allowing this shit to happen. That's true. Remember. That's true. You you better than this shit. Yeah. And also you need friends around you that tell you things like this. And yeah, I'm, where are your fucking friends yeah. at? Where are your, fr I'm, where yeah, are your you friends now? And guess what? I'm going to say something very profound and probably something that no one has ever said, but you are the master of your own destiny. Wow. That was hey, great, dude. Give me that self-help book. Come on, baby. What's your hey, self-help book called? Um, What is it? In the Nick of Time. Oh! oh! Come on, baby. Yeah. Let's go. That was good. Let's go. I didn't think you were going to land it, but you Me did. Me neither. That was nice. Dog. Wow. That I, could, was, I kept that thinking was about Joel Olstein in my head. I don't know why. That All was... Right. You, you, <laughs> I don't know why. You channeled Amazing. it. You channeled him. Yeah. That was good. That's like yeah. the, the Russian, the Russian uh, Olympian that has a sprained ankle that you wouldn't think was going to land it. Yeah, yeah. Pistorius. And she, and she stuck. She was like Soviet. And she no, landed it. Pistorius is the guy that had no legs and killed his girlfriend. That's Pistorius. Do you guys remember that guy? Who was that guy? You just love death. He's the guy. He's the South. He's, bro, this was like a huge story. This is a huge story. Recently? What is the story? The, he had no legs. He was in like, he was like one of the most famous like Paralympic sprinters. And I'm sorry. Wait, what, what's going on here? How, how's he sprinting without legs? He has the 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 bendy things, the bendy yeah, like he has oh, the, 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 the prosthetic legs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm so, so confused. I, he thought yeah. somebody broke into his house, but it was his girlfriend. Oh, I did. I do. <gasps> and he started shooting through the wall, and he killed her. And he was like, "Oh, but I thought it was an intruder." Yeah, but it was like, it, I think no he was trying to get rid of his girlfriend. I, I, and I he don't like know if he got away too many times. Something like that. It was like where it was like, uh, "What?" He walked up to him, went blah 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 blah, <laughs> and it was like, "Oh, I thought it was an intruder." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Oh, he should have had prosthetic arms. That would have never happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that shit would have never happened. <laughs> <laughs> they should have taken away his arms instead of his legs. <laughs> that fool still would have shot him with his toes with a shotgun like this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was an intruder. Yeah, you shot her with a shotgun with your feet. There was plenty of time to figure that out. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> he had a rig set so up. So he murdered her on purpose. I think he did. I'm pretty sure. It's like, how's I, that? Everything was pointing to... I remember... Yeah. I, I don't, I don't remember know if he details, got acquitted, though. But the... I don't know if he did either, but they were pointing towards like it was very obvious it was his girlfriend. This dude he was like, like screaming, went on. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> like, well, how did you do this? Yeah, this was clearly a murder. <laughs> I don't have legs. <laughs> you want? You gonna Sorry. put me in jail? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I, if I don't have legs in jail, what's gonna happen to me? <laughs> He's like bending over the whole time. I know. Don't you know? If you're sorry for me. <laughs> oh, I'll get out of jail super fast, dude. Yeah, this guy's good. Damn. Send David David's Zoe to jail. That's your new TV hey, show. See, relax, man. <laughs> <laughs> relax, buddy. How long does David Zoe survive in jail? Da -na -na -na. Oh, you think you don't think TNT. I I'm, I definitely want to survive in jail, though. You wouldn't? Mm -mm. I don't think I would either. I wouldn't either. I, I would do the first thing that people would tell not. you to do when you go in jail is to make a statement and beat up the, the strongest guy. Oh, yeah. shit. But I would get stabbed to death immediately. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel like they don't play that shit. You want my waffles? Yeah. You ain't getting my waffles? <laughs> like, why is he talking like that? <laughs> you want to kill me to get my waffles? <laughs> They're like, we're not even eating waffles. <laughs> <laughs> They're pancakes. <laughs> There's somebody in the back. They're pancakes, He's loser. Like, They're clearly pancakes. <laughs> They're clearly pancakes. Yeah, don't come in my yard and eat my waffles. He's walking around the fucking <laughs> cafeteria doing that Holding shit. pancakes. These my waffles. <laughs> yeah, this uh -huh, guy's crazy, uh -huh. dude. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. I think we do well in prison, actually. We do, Take right. that back. We do fine. Redact that. Hey, catch a Nick's new book in the nick of time. In Come the on, nick baby. of time. Come on. I'm actually very Step surprised. Up. Usually you crumble at those situations. I know. I, I, usually, I usually drop the ball. I'm hey, at do the, another one. I'm at the 20. Oh. <laughs> do another one. Uh, do you're another at, one. You're asking for lightning to hit in the same place twice, and I don't think I could promise that for you. Wow, I'm actually really proud of you right now. Me too. I'm happy. Thanks, man. Like you that know, made me happy. Some people, yeah, like, oh, some wow, people ask me, nice. they go, "Hey, do you have a concussion right now?" That's what they usually say. Yeah, because mm. I'm usually like slurring my words. Because you and, made like, that face like it wasn't gonna happen. You made that, <sighs> and we're like, Ooh. "No, yeah. I didn't. my face was very like in the stoic yeah. of time." What's my self help book called? S S so what? That's what it's called. So that's and then, actually but, pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly so how what? I always give advice. <sighs> mm -hmm. I was beat as a child. <laughs> so what? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And that's how you live your life. The cover of the so book what? is him crying on a bike in a thunderstorm. <laughs> Electrocuted, <laughs> you're gonna hit by thunder. <laughs> right on the faster. <laughs> that's all my dad in the bag. Right on the corner. Go there. 
My dad used to love yelling. That was his hobby, actually. Wow. He would just wake us up in the morning like that. My uncle used to do that shit, too. Really? He actually got in trouble from uh, my aunt because this fool would wake us up. Hey, wake up, lazy jackasses. <laughs> She's like, can you stop saying that to the kids? That's pretty mild, though. I was expecting something, like, way worse. But who says that to children when they're yeah, sleeping that's, that's, on a yeah. Saturday? That's true. Just like, it's a you. Saturday. <laughs> He's like, wake up, lazy jackasses. And she goes, why do you always do it's that? 7 a.m. <laughs> yeah, leave them alone. <laughs> They're kids. <laughs> like, come on, dude. I'm jacking off here, guy. Was uh, it like a military guy? Uh, he, well, long story short with him, we can go on a tirade about this guy. But he was like a like an OG in Sacramento in, in this area called Elk Grove. Elk mm -hmm. Grove was like a, like a cowboy, like horse town or some shit at the time. But he was like the only Asian dude in that area. I think that was in the Golden State documentary. <laughs> so he was like the only Asian dude in the area, but he was one of those guys that you just couldn't punk. Yeah. So back in the day, and even till now, because of some old timey law, like nunchucks are considered like a deadly weapon. If you get caught with nunchucks, like getting caught with a gun. Mm -hmm. So Damn. he was notorious and known for fucking people up with nunchucks in that area. That's so dope. So that is really sick. like there's a He's story. Literally Bruce Lee. Yeah. There's a story that um. So his uh his son, my cousin told me when he was working at a bank, he met this other guy, like an older dude. I think he either worked at the bank. I don't know what the story is, but he looked at him. He goes, hey, you kind of look like uh, this guy named Song, right? And he goes, oh, yeah, that's my dad. He goes, it's your dad? I was like, what's he doing now? What's he up to? He was like, oh, he's a he uh, teaches at Folsom Prison. Like he's like a correctional officer type of thing. He goes, you mean he's in jail? He goes, no, no, no. He teaches at the jail. He goes, your father teaches? <laughs> right? Because he just remembered him fucking people up back in the day that's so dope. like literally going to parties he, he teach that's what he teaches at the at the yeah. prison <laughs> how to stay alive so he would he how to would, make your own nunchucks like, <laughs> one of the stories there's a lot of stories about him but he told the story of when um you know he was an asian dude so people a lot of people would try to say racist shit to him so he mm -hmm. wanted to be somebody who couldn't get punk so he joined the football team mm -hmm. so he was like the only asian dude in the football team and Damn. he would go to these parties where some somebody would say some racist shit and he said this one time this dude at a house party did like a chink joke in him took his nunchucks and fucking wrecked this dude's car smashed every that's fucking so window funny. with the nunchucks dude that makes me very happy inside yeah that's and so he had crazy. to because he was the only asian dude in that whole fucking area right so he had to make sure that nobody was gonna fuck make a with statement him. that's how you make a statement Bro. which makes sense because he would beat my ass all the time and he has old man strength mm. so he would always fuck me up because i was like a, a such a clown mm -hmm. and so he just hated all the jokes that i would make and like, he, this would just pin me down and beat me up dude david has such an uh, interesting story that's wild dude i always think you're gonna run out of stories but you never do well, it's like my, it's like everybody's story around me because yeah. they they're i just remember things very well so your uncle's bruce lee that dude's like a comic book character dude yeah. just beating the shit everybody he's shang chi bro amazing. he's the guy he's how he, fucking nuts it is it that uh somebody like my cousin's person that he met at work knows his dad yeah because of how much of a badass he is yeah and my buddy ed park the other one he has a similar story with his dad he did he found out that his dad was in a korean gang because his youth pastor at the time remembered his dad he wow. was an original founding member of this of group called uh kk which they're known as korean killers mm -hmm. and they were a, a gang that Listen, was one more k though <laughs> one more. So, so you want to know a funny story about that more, yeah. his mom would have been right <laughs> his mom would tell him stories when he was younger would always tell him not to be in gangs because of his dad and so she goes don't join gangs don't be in kkk <laughs> and he's a korean guy he goes mom i can't be in the kkk there's no way so i would get it he never knew what that was from until he met that youth uh, pastor and he goes crazy. he goes oh, no it's kk for korean killers and he goes now i know what my mom was saying this whole time right. i thought the ku klux klan <laughs> yeah Oh yeah, man! Yeah, wow. crazy stories, dude. Man. That's fucking wild. That's fucking. Nuts. Yeah, there's some. There's a lot more stories about him that I can't remember right now. I have to ask him, but he, that's that's what he was known for. You should get him man. on the podcast. No, That'd he's a little great. nuts. He's he's fucking crazy. Well, he's what a fucking good podcast that would be. That would be a great. But podcast. I would have to deal with him the oh, whole time because yeah, yeah. he kind of irritates me. He's like oh, one really? of those guys that makes jokes and he waits until you laugh at it. So he'll do a joke like this, right? Hey, so this is his voice, by the way. Hey, so um, Trump's kind of crazy, huh? 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 Yeah. Uh-huh. Huh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So he's like a real old guy. Yeah. 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 yeah man, he's crazy. <laughs> he's crazy. Wow. That, I know you were acting. I, mean, I, I knew that was David, but that made me uncomfortable. Yeah. So that's every fucking Thanksgiving for me. Wow. And he likes to always pray. So you saw him on Thanksgiving? No, I did not. I avoided him like Corona. Was he there? So no, he was not. We had we had to do separate Thanksgivings right. because of Corona and shit. See, that's the, that's the other beauty of Corona. Sometimes yep. like, you know, you don't get to see certain family members that you don't really want to see. That's Dude, true. Fuck this fool's Thanksgiving prayers 30 minutes long. Oh. Dear God, 
I like to thank you for the the <laughs> dewdrops on the blades of grass that you have provided for us, Lord. Because without the dewdrops, there would be no moisture. Without moisture, there is no water. Plants. What are plants? <laughs> like, like, oh shit. Like, Uncle, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I knew this one lady that we used to like. I used to coach, and she's infamous for being. One of those people that just like once they start talking to you, oh, game they're over. talking at you. They're not literally. Mm -hmm. So they'll be like, "Oh, so the other day I was looking through the newspaper and I was I was wondering why there was firefighters going down the street." And my son used to be a firefighter, and he's about twenty eight years old. And the thing about him is that paramedics, right? They're, they're at, and she would go on and the on, worst. and everybody would as soon as she would come by, everybody would just slowly scatter. So that's my uncle, but just add <laughs> random like lightweight racist shit in there. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. There you go. This will walk up to one of one of one up. of my uh, cousin's <laughs> friends. We Edgy. were chilling. Well, paprika. And I remember this because I was so mortified. He looks at him, and his friend's Puerto Rican. He goes, "Hey, what are you?" He goes, "Puerto Rican." He goes, "A lot of you in prison." <laughs> Nice, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I was not expecting I go, that. Way to put your best foot forward. <laughs> he goes, there's a lot of you in prison. <laughs> he just goes right upstairs. Like, hey, why'd you do that, dude? We just eat cereal in the living room. Why did yeah, I do that? Wow. You know what's funny? is like human beings are constantly looking for patterns. And that was the pattern he made with that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like, it's like, because you know how some people like the other version of that is, oh, like my, one of my, my sister's best friend is Puerto Rican. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. You know? But then his, his, his mind was, oh, there's a lot of you. <laughs> then he walked away thinking, I just made a connection with that <laughs> <Yeah>. kid. <laughs> he, wrote it, he wrote it in his diary. He's, He's like, like, that guy was really cool. I, really I made connected. a great connection. <laughs> I told the Puerto Rican guy that a lot of his relatives in prison. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> in his fucking journal. Oh, Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> well, guys, that wraps up oh this episode God. of the Genius Brain Podcast. Oh, my God. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that episode. So uh, love you guys. Uh, I, my family's nuts. Uh, if you guys haven't noticed, you can find Patrick at patrick.t.riley at Instagram and everything else. And then you have Nick the Ear at Nick the Ear. Oh, that's the West Side, huh? Yeah, we're throwing it up. We're just throwing up, my babies. Just in the nick of time, baby. Just in the nick Ooh. of... Your boy's gonna pee his pants. Dang. See y'all next time. Peace, peace, peace.